Oh, All right, guys and girls, welcome to episode three of Bros with Brains with your hosts. Ben Mayfield Smith. <laughs> I did that on purpose. <laughs> I did that on purpose. I was hoping I was thinking he's gonna be like, oh yeah, Aaron first. No, nope, I'm gonna throw it to you first. <laughs> So anyway, and I'm Aaron. Thanks for joining us again. And thanks for all the love that's been going on for the last two episodes and all the questions yeah, and right. all the comments and shares. And, <laughs> you know, it's been quite interesting. I, I didn't think, well, I think we both didn't think this was going to be anything worth listening to. And apparently everyone likes to hear us talk shit. So awesome. Thanks, I mean, guys. My only logic is that Melbourne has nothing else going on right now. Dude, we're, in locked, we're in lockdown six. All right. Shut up. <laughs> like last time we last time we spoke and we did the podcast, we did it on a Wednesday, the day before we went into lockdown. And I'm sitting here talking about, yeah, like we're gonna go to the gyms, we're gonna train and shit. And then next day, uh, as of 8 p.m., we will be going into lockdown. <laughs> Everything is shut. It's like for fuck's sake, you stupid. Yeah, look, dick. That, was, that was me followed by a nice humble brag about how good Queensland was doing, and then we go into lockdown. But, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I, think, I think we just those three shut days up. turned into those three days turned into seven, and now we're good. Yeah, I think we just shut up about lockdowns and fucking. Yeah, no, that that's shit, it. Just, like, Episodes that's it, one and two, cool. That's it. Done and done. Man. So what's, stay there. what's been happening now? You're out of lockdown finally. What are you Wednesday today? So you've been able to get into the gym again and get into some training. And what's been happening? Oh, dude, it's actually it was good. Hey, it was good. Um, we decided to reset training block um, just because it was a pointless, uh, pointless meso um, entering into like week three, having done no progression. So um, just decided to reset the meso and start the week again. So I'm uh, sorry, the block again. So um, yeah, got into Got into legs last night um, and dealt a bit of a dick in this block. I've got um, two legs followed by three, two legs, Thought two legs. legs. No, it's two legs, three up, and then another leg. Then yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm like, yeah, so cool. Yeah, you're legs back shit. to back. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. fun. Um, and this last night following RDLs and stuff on Monday um, was Nordic curls, like uh, just eccentric Nordics on yeah. the on the lap pull down because we mm-hmm. don't have any of those machines at the gym. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, man. Why? I, I was in bed last night, literally just like, didn't even wear doing it for most of it because I'm like, I don't want to risk cramping. <laughs> I'm like, I, I can feel like, you know, when, you know when you're like, you've done a good yeah. leg session, you're like, yeah, I can yeah, feel yeah. this coming yeah, and, and you, I know and that it's going to happen. You know you're cramping in bed, you're in trouble. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, oh, okay, well, all right. I won't move too much. Just stay in one spot. Um, so that was, that was, that was good. I was like, I, I got through the session. I'm like, I was like getting to a point where it was a little bit later. Um, and I was like, ah, oh, maybe I just, I'm, like, I'm just a bit over it. And I was like, no, you bitched and moaned for a week about not having a gym. Shut the fuck up and finish it. And I was like, yes, yeah. yes. Fuck and then it. I just pumped it out. Yes. Please appreciate that you guys can be in gyms more often <laughs> than us, you fucker. No, it's, it's that, that's how it goes. Hey, you're like, like you, you, you take it for granted until it's taken away. And then you're like, no, there's still other people who can't train. You make this fucking count. Exactly fucking right. Think of us here <laughs> in, in lockdown number six, not being able to do shit for no reason. <laughs> Wait, anyway. you don't do anything anyway. You've got you've got your garage set up. You've got yeah. Grocery I still somewhere. I, I still go to the gym to train. I mean, there's only so much I'm going to do in a garage. Don't get me wrong. I'm very very fortunate. And, you know, very lucky that I've got the garage set up that I do. But still, like we know that toys are fun and we like to play on different things. <laughs> I do mean the gym. <laughs> the weird swing you seen in the back yes. of his room. That's not <laughs> for that's all not you weirdos thing. listening. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, you still can't. Have you been able to get back into uni now that things are open, like classes and subjects open, or is it still online? No. Nah, so we, I want to say lucky, but this week for both my subjects, it fell on what was supposed to be our pre-organized um, Echo Week. So all the all the subjects go into a public holiday shut anyway. Yeah. Um, they rechanged the schedule, but both of my lecturers and my sorry, my unit coordinators just said we're not changing. Um, the structure's been set, so we'll just keep it as is. So it's um. It's been lucky because this week actually went pretty ham on theory. So I'm like actually taking the two weeks to study. Um, the perception and cognition actually goes into psychophysics. So for anyone that anyone that anyone that is listening, um, the idea that psychology also in, a, in engages in physics is baffling, but it is apparently a pretty big concept. Um, so we, we have to understand. Physics. Yeah, literally, I was like, <laughs> psycho, I get. Yeah. The physics, I'm like, yeah. ah, Stephen Funny. Hawking or and something? It, like, yeah, anyone that's help. been following my content, I did a whole ton of, like, biomechanics stuff. So it's, like, line of force and, like, moment arms and stuff, which is, you know, mostly physics anyway. But, yeah, nah, nah. Yeah, the only, the, only way, the only way I could make sense of it was, because uh, it was a 
it was around the um, perception of noticeable change in stimuli. So yeah. it can be across any spectrum. So any perceivable or uh, cognitive stimuli that we can interpret. So uh, light, sound, taste, smell, mm-hmm. um, uh, physical load. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just associated through lifting. That was, all, that was like the only way I could yeah. make it make sense. I was like, so if the load at five kilos is noticeably different at 5.5, then the load at 500 kilos, we noticeably different at 505. Yeah. But that's roughly like the, the equation, how it works out. And I was like, I have to make this make sense. How do I do that? <laughs> oh, lifting so, stuff. Well, yeah. One plate equals this. Two plates. Yes. <laughs> Can we do and, these numbers in 25 pound increments? <laughs> yes. And there's the bro. <laughs> <laughs> in this uh, chat. <laughs> yeah. In this yep. podcast. I only, I only, um, I only multiply or add and subtract by plates. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just one plate, two. If plates, Ben has plate. one plate and uses two plates, <laughs> what is the increase load? Death. <laughs> Blown Ben's out a bitch. Knees. Yeah, well, pretty much. Two plates. <laughs> like, what the fuck is he doing with two plates? Bicep curling. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's been it's been good. Like the 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 week is just an added chance to just to catch up on some content. Um, just because these two subjects seem to be pretty theory dense, so I'm actually like for anyone that does check the podcast, like I do I do handwritten palm cards, just three different concepts of easy learning that I just stick into my head to try and memorize. Helps I guess. Goes old school. Well, no school like the old school, right? Oh, I've, I've looked at um. Uh, there's that website you can sign up to. It's called um. Oh, shit, what's it called? Um, the flashcard website they literally have professors and stuff pre-make them but i find actually writing it myself anyway yeah, just helps it's, it it's a learning a technique for you to actually yeah yeah when you actually handwrite it yourself you, you remember exactly yeah right, so and then i just go back and flip between so yeah it helps out but yeah. it's made it's made uh this week a bit more enjoyable i guess is just having that extra week off just regardless and getting some extra content done yeah for sure man and how's uh, Matter going? How's everything going with Z business? Man, Matter's good. I'm pumped. Um, it's 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 been a cool time to see the um, the. I guess me and you talk about it all the time, so it's it's easy to forget that all the people don't talk about it. Um, <laughs> what what is? Well, I talked to like five people, so that's that's everyone to me. Um, yeah, I'm with you. I speak to six. <laughs> the, the the window was essentially established first at four to five years. That was the plan, um, encompassing the psychology degree and things like that. And then some stuff, some personal stuff happened where I was just like, "Look, let's uh, let's get this down to a year. Let's shrink this down and make this as possible in a year as I can." Um, I believe we call that Parkinson's law. Yes, uh, the time the time you allocate to execute a job is the time it will take you to do the job. Um, and so that 12 months, then we sort of looked at that and go, all right, what has to be done in 12 months to, to make it a, a step into a good job? Um, and then, yeah, literally literally in like a month, I was like, so I do I do month to month audits where I'm like, all right, what did I get done this month? And what did I set out to do? Um, so I can see if I'm redirecting energy, if I'm being lazy, if I'm still having enough time to train and all that sort of jazz. Um, and then, yeah, it came out like we, we got to uh shopify and the website um i think it was three blogs were done um 12 posts or no, i think it was like 15 posts on on socials um oh, what else was there teas were delivered um uh, social presence was increased so like all the stuff that we measure and can track and i was like okay so it turns out we did a bit <laughs> it turns out it was a little bit not <laughs> as well as work full time and train so i'm like yeah. okay cool yeah so when you reflect so, back and look back and you're like oh okay so i actually did something that's good yeah. that's that's a positive it was a productive month <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, sweet. Um, now, how do I schedule in Sony and some weed? Um, yeah, right. <laughs> what, um, <laughs> how do you, so is that something that you're going to do going forward? It's like having your sort of KPIs per month that you want to hit from, a, like, I guess, a social media aspect? Yeah, so I like, like us, we like metrics. Um, yeah. So I, I, during my mid-semester break, um, I laid out content fields I want to explore, mm-hmm. um, narrowed them into, into, um, into categories and scheduled, like, um, what days they were going and things like that. So um, it just el- eliminates the the theory of um, too much choice, um, mm-hmm. being lost in option, yep. um, narrowing it down to what I know I have to talk about. And then it's just easy to write about. Of course. Um, whereas before I was getting lost in sort of trying to, oh, what would be good today? Oh yeah, okay, I can expand on that from last week. And it was like, now it's like, right, you've got it like lined out. Today is this day, let's talk about this. And most of the time, most of the type of stuff that's easy to come to, so I have to go do extra research. It's just make sure it's on point and just obviously grab and check it, and put, put it out there. Um, so yeah, the in terms of those KPIs and stuff like that, it's it'll be easy to track in each month to make sure I'm either meeting the previous month or increasing, and you know, then breaking down which posts didn't didn't work, which blogs didn't didn't work. Um, how can we increase flow to the website and stuff like that? 
Because again, it's not just about making money to me. Like we said last week, one person be enough to me. I just want people to see it. Yeah, um, of course. And so for now, for now, it's like as much as I will start selling stuff, there's also free stuff. So yeah. even if this, even if that free thing triggers a thought in your head where you're like, cool, I might look at work different. I might look at life different. I might look at how I train different. Sweet. That's a job done. That's free for you. You can take that away. I don't expect you to pay me for something. Um, if you want to go further, you can. But if all of you take out of it is some free information that changes how you think, sweet. And I can track that we, we've got those um, things all set up to, to just make sure that traffic is flowing and things are being seen and people are saying stuff. So yeah, that'll, that'll probably be a, an ongoing thing that um, just as I like metrics at my current job, I like metrics at uh, you know training, I like metrics at the food. It's just another metric thing we can track. Yeah, beautiful. Well, I mean, I guess a ton of people are chucking it up on Instagram and you know tagging and stuff. So it's a good thing to see and it's just going to take off, right? It's just going to be a matter of time. See what I did there? Matter yeah, dude, that's the... <laughs> yeah, I'm funny. What's that? See, see what I did there? Matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, dude, it's, been, it's actually been like, it was probably the most, uh, what's the word? The most humbling thing is it seeing, uh, seeing something that, I, that we coined in my head and then sort of started expanding on um, and then people actually starting to associate that say like the the same narrative i had in my head of what that meant like when you see the the matter mentality hashtag that's just really embodying something that i've always sort of done anyway and just sort of put a word to it and gave it a little bit of a context and story and to see people align with that the same way and go hey this is what i'm doing or like you know i wore this today and this is what i thought i'm like that's fucking cool man that is just like like it gives me a mental erection there's another way to put it and i'm just like <laughs> like i don't know how to be more gratified like, uh, show more gratitude like it's it's um yeah it's it's something pretty cool because I literally had a conversation with my brother and like, we don't think the same, but you know, he said to me one day, we're in uh, the pool, this uh, the, the pool that I go to. And he's like, Oh, um, one of, one of his, one of his friends said that psychology, it was a waste of time as a degree. Um, unless you do your post-grad I was like, Oh, I bet you regret doing that now. I was like a waste of time. I'm like, not a fucking all. Like I love this <laughs> shit. This is so fucking awesome to me. Like, I, I wake up, see people tag shit. I wake up, people see it. Like just the fact someone comments on their engaged, I'm like, oh man, this is, is not for like a, it's not an ego boost really for me. It's not like a, uh, like a vanity check. It's just that like someone thinks with me and like aligns with my head. Like that's fucking cool. Cause this shit's cuckoo. Like I was, was going to say, it's cool. <laughs> <but> concerned. <laughs> yeah. I think a greater part of the population needs help than we thought. Yeah. Uh, one, in, <laughs> like, one in 10 have uh one in 10 are fine psychopathy. So yeah, I don't know. it's like, yeah, we're going to start calling the, uh, calling it the matter effect or something or something like that. Just like, <laughs> yeah. if this is the way you think uh, yeah. we have problems and we need you to go refer out now. <laughs> so why is this mental health ward full of matter athletic or athletes? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> where do we begin? <laughs> well here is their here is their criteria sheet and this is what you know where they scored highest and where they scored lowest <laughs> this is all jokes thinking this way is great <laughs> yeah. um, that's, that's cool like it's cool to see you know all that sort of stuff being posted and even similar i guess from myself like putting up the the post yesterday that i did on quad anatomy it's amazing how something so simplistic i guess to to us you know like in terms of basic anatomy and understanding what the quads actually do and understanding that you know turning your toes in, Don't in the knees. I saw yeah. That. <laughs> yeah turning your toes in and out uh on compound movements and people thinking that it still activates Gosh. different parts of the quad and it's like well it doesn't and then just explaining it and people are like oh shit i think i got like 20 something shares i was like fuck <laughs> like, yeah, right i'm guess i'm guessing people really liked that or they just simply didn't agree with it i don't know either way <laughs> but it's kind well, of like, they thought well, that they, they thought that the quad did do that and now they don't yeah i had a few people message and question and be like oh like i thought what about this and what about that and i'm just like well i mean you got to look at it from you know the, the cause of the issue that you're, you're questioning not the issue itself because you know issue isn't the issues aren't normally the cause so yeah but yeah, no, it was interesting. I didn't real, I didn't genuinely think that that post was gonna take off the way it did, and I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> it's it's know. weird. Hey, like in your head, do you notice sometimes like you put something out there and you're like, oh, this should get a lot of like interaction, and then it doesn't, and then there's ones where you're like, oh, this is yeah, like, well, a, I think a, it's a knowledge filler, and yeah, it's like, well, oh fuck. Well, I feel like it's the time that I put into the post versus the time <laughs> that you know. It's like, yeah, man, I'm telling you that fucking reel that I did about fo- uh, about force, <laughs> no about uh, talk. That, that talk, I'm telling you, like trying to work out how to get my head on top of an image of myself to talk about freaking different points of fucking force. It took me, yeah. it took me three or four hours to do it. And then I got like, got three hardly, likes. Yeah, like hardly any engagement. I'm like, 
<laughs> fuck this man like seriously <laughs> but then i do the post last night which is like i got i reeled off pretty much the content straight off the top of my head um, yeah and i'm like ah oh, all right <laughs> like for fuck's sake <laughs> fucking sick of this shit fuck, I hate this now. <laughs> fuck everyone the hard stuff. yeah bad like you know educational shit that i wanted to put up and you know get into biomechanics and everyone's sort of like yeah it's cool for the first two things and now it's like yeah fuck it <laughs> and now i'm like all right well let's move to anatomy so the next month or so i'll probably do some anatomy breakdown and yeah let's see what happens there <laughs> but it, it's good it's good because it's like it's it's a um it's a cool reflection of how everyone has different niches i guess of stuff like to to me for instance when i talk about like um certain psychological uh concepts especially ones that i'm versed in and i spent a lot of time reading or researching or, or implementing and things like that it seems when you get to the base of it, you're like, oh, it's pretty intuitive. Like you think this would be pretty common sense. And then you speak to people and they're just like, but like to them, you know, like someone might talk about mechanics to me in terms of like engineering and things like that. And I'm like, I pay 120 bucks down the road for a service. So I've got to tell you Um, to them, to them, it's like, but this is easy. And to me, it's like, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's just it. Right. Well, it's like, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like my audience or my um, sort of social media audience is, probably guys and girls that sort of go to the gym have a clue and coaches so it's kind of like you know not is it that they're they're not understanding or knowing this stuff is that they know it and they just didn't think to share it and you know it's something that they shared is it something that yeah. you know they've had in their head they weren't sure about and we've sort of clarified it like yep. these like little ideas and thoughts where we can't really identify them as a metric so it's kind of like we don't yep. know why they're doing what they're doing so i think that's yes. probably the more curious thing because then it you know obviously would help me create the content so it's kind of like well yeah like why did you share that is it because you yeah. didn't know because you want to mm-hmm. know more is it because you find it interesting is it you disagree with well, it like fuck man people, like, more people should share it or see it yeah yeah right like just be interested yeah. yeah i was looking at the metrics this morning i was like fuck <laughs> yeah yeah sure. but i get that i get that way hey you like because like, i i will do as i was saying like i'll do like a monthly check and go through and see like all right what was the top not too much top posts is in like a, oh i got a gratification here to this oh, people liked it it's more so like I want you to see more of what you like, but also like, is it informative? So is this what, you know, why does it look like, you know, there's high shares or high saves or whatever. It's like, all right, well, why, why was there more shares? Why was yeah. there more likes? Why was there not as much engagement? Um, you know, could I write it a little bit differently? Am I giving too much info without enough questions? Like how do I get to understand the metrics? The metrics are great because we can measure them, but it's less, it's less, inferential statistics and more descriptive statistics because I can't actually infer why you've, yeah, you want to understand the person. Point. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you want to understand someone's sort of train of thought and as why are they doing, or what are they doing and why. But I mean, that's yeah. a whole different thing to talk about. <laughs> why are we here? Yeah, <laughs> to be or not to be? <laughs> <laughs> that is the question. Um, so we're talking about uh, before we started that you wanted to rant about something to do with nutrition. What what happened now? Who stirred you and who who did you the wrong way? <laughs> who, no. who, who, who did what now? <laughs> now nah, look stirred me is the wrong word it's just a constant theme that i've been seeing that i feel like is missed on a lot of people so it stems i think from the the nature and reputation of bodybuilding but it also ends up being employed by the i don't want to say the anti-diet community but the the that idea around restrictive dieting or restriction is a negative thing and, and yada yada and people get lost in the whole like it's negative it's a piece of shit don't do it the, the thing that I often want to touch on that I have to try to explain to people they miss when they get the questions like, oh, you know, why do you compete or why do you diet? You know, it's, it's so hard. Why do you, you know, you don't get to eat cake or you don't get to eat ice cream. And it actually leads to a big misunderstanding with athletes themselves when they engage, especially those first times. Um, what you would call, I guess, the duality of the process and the false dichotomy in that when we diet, when we, so when we, when we enter bodybuilding, people give it this miss, I don't say misdemeanor, but a misconception that from bodybuilding, bodybuilding is responsible for the eating disorder and for the body image issue and for the, these things. But the reality is bodybuilding doesn't have an agenda. It's simply a sport with a metric criteria subjective to a degree, but also objective measurable ideas. And that simply to get to those metrics and tick those criteria requires a certain behavior of you across a period of time. That is, we enter a period of training where you enlist a coach and at a certain time frame out, 12, 16, 20 weeks, whatever it is, you accept 
and engage in the idea that to achieve the desired look you want to be considered for winning, you must reduce body fat. In order to reduce body fat, we must acknowledge we restrict calories. To restrict calories means you either choose, well, lower calorie dense food options or increase food volume with lower density. So it's kind of like the trade-off we get. Now, the thing that gets me is when people say, oh, you can't have food, you can't have this, and you can't eat cake, and you can't do pancakes, and you can't do this shit and that shit. The thing is that leads to a lot of issues, I think, is the misconception uh, like cognitively around the idea that you can't do it and that it's bodybuilding's fault for being restrictive. False. You can do it. I think I spoke to Nelly about this the other day. We were talking about something um, on Instagram. She messaged back about something. Um, and I was saying it gets missed a lot, especially by people when like James Smith was going on his little rants and bullshit, is that we can. It's simply you have to accept that once the decision is made, you cannot move back from it and that you have to accept the consequence of the action. And that action is going to be that you're further away from the goal you want. Yeah. So it's not that it's restrictive. It's that you fundamentally acknowledge that to get to where you want to be requires a restriction in calories. Yeah. Now, yes, you can have some pretty shitty coaches and some pretty shitty people that um, misunderstand that. And yeah, you get restricted pretty early and poor dieting practices. But a certain degree of onus has to be placed on the competitor and the person choosing to engage in that behavior that to get to that result, it's going to uh, require a restriction anyway. So like I said, you can have the cake, you can have a donut, but then also comes with the cognitive acceptance of the choice and that that's your choice that you made. So that's like- It's a conscious decision, right? Exactly. It's the part that it, it, it frustrates me because we- we then get associated with like this negative image around bodybuilding and dieting and that, um, you know, going through a certain cut period is the wrong thing to do and all that sort of jazz. And it's like, it's an objective thing without an agenda. You can't say it's a fault here. Yeah. You can say the means in which you went about it may have not been optimal, yeah. but that does not necessarily mean you get to place onus on the thing you chose to do. And if let's say you didn't do your due diligence on finding a good coach, you may understand dieting psychology a bit more effectively or the, I guess the entire diverse concept of nutrition and how to maximize food volume and hunger, or simply you haven't practiced the acceptance of hunger yet. If you haven't experienced being hungry entering into a bodybuilding contest, probably not going to be the best thing for your head. Yep. Totally fair. Yeah. Well, it's it's like you said, it's, it's genuinely a choice to do that. It's not, someone hasn't got a gun to your head and said, Right. I'm going to restrict your food so you can look really, really lean. I mean, look, let's be real. Probably some bodybuilding competitors probably need that, but <laughs> like it's not someone, someone's not threatening your life to say, Hey, you know, yeah. this is what you need to do. Otherwise this is what's going to happen. It's literally you choose to do that. If you don't want to do it, then don't do it. <laughs> like it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. It's it, like, it, it gets because like, yeah, yes. Uh, like there are shitty coaches. Like everyone knows that in this industry, there's shitty coaches. There's also shitty mechanics. There's also shitty carpenters. There's shitty trainees. Like we know they exist. The thing is, they simply provide you with a means to get to the place that they know the best method, like that they know how to get there. And then it's on you to whether or not you accept it and whether or not you follow through. Like, yeah, it, there's some people that just get absurdly hungry and disgusting levels of calories. Some coaches will bottom you out and you just simply have to accept it for 12 weeks and all that sort of jazz. But again, if you haven't really done the research, you haven't really expanded your options and the first person you find is who you go with to do a bodybuilding show, it's like literally going from kicking a park footy to try to play NRL and being like, I don't know what I got hurt. Yeah, well, I guess then the question would be, how do we, not we, I mean, I guess let's say a newbie wanting to do bodybuilding, you know, they've got some training experience and all that sort of stuff and they're sort of wanting to go to the next level. But it's like, I guess a lot of people that do go to the gym and want to do this stuff, they're not, necessarily coaches they're not um you know athletes half the time they're just this is something that they can you know push towards as their goal how do how do you think you go about finding a coach that's a know-how because you look at social media for example and you know you look at all these let's say bodybuilders who are coaching and we know that majority of them are pretty shit right there's a couple Mm -hmm. of really good ones and then there's Mm -hmm. a majority of them are mediocre at best if not pretty fucking Mm -hmm. poor but they're the, they're the ones that you're going to go to, right? Most of the time when you don't know anything else about the industry, it's kind of like, because yeah. it's like, okay, bodybuilding comp, I'm going to look for a bodybuilder because they're probably going to coach it. They've gone through it. They know how to do it. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's a hard line because I mean, when you think 
I'm I'm going to get into sprinting. Do you go straight for finding Usain Bolt to coach you? Well, when, I mean, you think like I want to get into car racing. Do you go straight to try and Instagram uh, what's his name Michael Schumacher? Like it's weird. We're the only industry I find where the person doing is also somehow the person most ethically considered for the 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 role of coaching someone else through it. Yeah. Which in most sports it just doesn't happen. Like, sure, you get like, you know, I guess like BJJ or like martial arts stuff like that. You get like the, the, yeah, the, the you go to the world champ if you can. Yeah, exactly. Um, but for some reason, like this sport, it's, um, you know, it, it requires, in all honesty, if anyone's listening to this, it requires due diligence in finding because psychologically, physiologically, having someone that aligns with you and the way you value the competition, the way that you value training, nutrition, understand its fundamentals it's going to be very different for each coach. So there's some coaches who will just not do nothing but pick, uh, pick out the monotonous robots and go, you know, I've got world-class athletes. It's like, yeah, bro, you, you've got the guys who can do everything you say with no questions and push through it and train through it, drug through it, and they're good. They're, they're the one in a million. Like you, yeah. you're lucky you get them. And then if you can build a reputation around that business, great. But most of the coaches and most of the athletes, there needs to be a better relationship between like, you've got to find someone who understands you and you can understand them. The communication is do, is, is bilateral. Um, the whole concept is a teamwork idea. That's going to support you getting through it. So if you just simply go to the biggest guy you find and go, well, this guy told me this, and now he said to take all these drugs, and that's what I'm going to do. It's like, man, if you went to the first trader that gave you a quote, and all of a sudden his prices are sky high, and like, you know, he's going to do one job that's going to cost you a million bucks, are you going to sign on to him? Like, are you going to ask around? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like I said, it's interesting. It's just you know, so many people. Wanting to get into, I guess, phys- we'll call it physique com- competition. So, you know, not just open bodybuilding, but any of the the classes. And it's just, you know, yeah. the first thing that they would go to is, you know, Instagram or Facebook, for example, or maybe even Google. And they'll, you know, type in like bodybuilding coach and you probably find Bodybuilding coach. Yeah, right. And it's like bodybuilders are the first thing that come up. So it's kind of like, well, how do we shift through the shit yeah. you know, and, and pick the coaches that are going to be knowledgeable and be able to sort of guide you through that to keep you as healthy as possible, you know, in every yeah. aspect. Are they educated in nutrition or epidemiology or are they simply just, I've done it so I know? Yeah, There's a good way to shift through it to start off with. Yeah, but then I guess on the flip side to that, it's like, you know, um, while education obviously being very, very, you know, sought after, we do know that industry experience does play a big role as well because we know that there's like a, a ton of good coaches that don't have, we'll call formal qualifications or education. They have done their own upskilling and all that sort of stuff, mm-hmm. but they haven't got that formal aspect of co- uh, so the formal aspect of education yet. They're able to get a result, do well for their clients, and you know, look after them effectively and get them to where they need to be. So it's funny. It's, it's like there's this like you know double edged sword where we have you know, f- formal education being sort of one of the big things, but then we can see people with formal education still have no clue because they have no practical yeah. experience. And then yeah. we have on the other side, you know, everyone with practical experience, but no formal education. It's kind of like, well, how do we find that middle? Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tough area. Hey, cause like it, the risk, the risk involved, it's not a, it's not a low risk, high reward scenario. It's like, yeah. it's a very high risk scenario. Yeah. There is the potential that you develop, um, you know, eating disorders, pathological responses, um, body image issues, physiological issues, hormone issues. Like the, the, the potential for that is high yeah. um, and you have to be understanding of that. So when you're playing with something as serious as your body, like you put it this way, would you, would you, would you risk a, taking a Ferrari to a basic mechanic around the corner or would you check who's qualified to coach, sorry, to improve or um, work on Ferraris? Yeah. Like, it's kind of like, well, your body is a Ferrari. Like if you value a Ferrari more than your body, you're already missing the concept. Yeah. So, well, and I guess on the flip side to that, so then you'd be taking it to someone that's already well-known or experienced, right? Has got the client, like the proven results with clients and that sort of thing. So then I guess how do newbie, cl- newbie coaches <laughs> that want to come in, you know, <laughs> then get their clients or get a client to to stage or even let's say to a platform for powerlifting or strongman competition, you know, they might have all the theoretical knowledge. They might be semi-strong themselves or, you know, semi in shape, whatever it is, but they've got, you know, potentially either the formal education or enough education, but they don't have the experience because everyone's going to the yeah. experience guys. <laughs> it's like, it's such a, a funny mix, right? It's like, how, how do you, yeah. wedge, how do you wedge yourself in there? Like, yeah, it's <laughs> 
it becomes tough, hey? Like it, it's <laughs> like you, you have to believe in yourself enough. You have to back yourself, value your own worth and skill, and then seek out. Like you can't, as well. You can't wait for people to come to find you. You've got to go actively out and seek. Seek them. Yes. Um, like I know there's certain coaches use certain methods, like they'll attack someone's appearance and then tell them how they can fix it. And it's like, ah, it gets results, but it's also so shitty. Like yeah. it's such a, it's yeah. such a shitty practice. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, yeah, how, how do you cut through the, the, the shit to be, mm-hmm. to get that recognition that like, Hey, look like, you know, I see like two, like one of the things I credit Tim Grover with, which is probably one of the greatest business moves as a mistake I've ever seen when Tim Grover first came to uh, coaching, and he said, well, I want to coach professional athletes out, out of studying kin- um, kinesiology, yeah, kinesiology, kinesiology, yeah. kinesiology yeah. Um, and exercise science, um, he went to the Bulls and sent a letter to every single player in the on-court team, the bench team, and the reserve team, except Michael Jordan. Then the only person who got back to him was Michael Jordan. Yeah. He's like, why the fuck did you send it to all these guys? And not like, me. what is it that you offer that I can't, that, you know, that I want? And he managed to find that one athlete who just wanted to get better and better. And that cut through to get with Michael. Then from Michael got into Scotty, Kevin Durant. I think we've talked about him before. And yeah, like, he got into a whole stack all the, top, top all these coaches, like, yeah. yeah, all these top basketballers. He's now with Phil Heath, like yeah. all this stuff. He's just like, all because he sent a letter to approach people to coach them. He's like, yeah. this is what I can do for you. And whilst he, I think in some of them and with Michael, he attacked their, their physical not appearance, but their yeah, yeah. anatomy, their movements. And then from that, he was like, this is what I would correct. Yeah. So it wasn't so much a, Oh, you look like shit. You shoot like shit. No, just it was him stronger. Exactly. It's like, Hey, like this is a problem I've noticed. Like if we can add 5% to your jump short or like 3% to your uh, uh, footwork or speed, you'll get this result and then did it. And then Michael's like, everyone needs to get this guy. Yeah. And so yeah. that's like the, I know, like take from that what you will as a, a, a soon to be coach maybe, but like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a hard realm yeah, to well, walk it's into. It's funny, too, even like, like myself, like I, I sometimes sort of struggle. I'm lucky that I've got, you know, pretty much nearly a full book of clients and they're all, you know, either powerlifters. Humble or brag. Of, well, no, I mean, more so like they're more physique, <laughs> like either physique or powerlifters, but it's kind of like, how do you, like, like, how do I get someone to stage, for example, if I've never gone to stage, which I haven't, you know what I mean? Like, I've, it's not like yeah. I haven't dieted. I've dieted. I know all the theoretical. I've got a fair bit of practical. I've been able to grow. I've been able to shrink. So it's yep. kind of like, yeah, but at the same time, it's like, I've never been to stage. So how am I supposed to get a client that's looking to go to stage and put them on stage? You know what I mean? Like, I've, yeah, got, yeah. I've, got, I've got clients that are actually going to stage. Don't get me wrong. I'm lucky in that aspect. They trust me enough and you know, understand that I probably know something, which I think I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. About, about getting them to, to stage and keeping them as healthy as possible. But it's just interesting. That's why I sort of look at it. I'm like, you know, I had this conversation with a few people. I have this conversation with Dean a lot as well. And it's just like, yeah, I'm like, how did you do start doing this, man? And he's just like, honestly, I got lucky. I had a couple of friends that wanted to go to stage and put them on stage and did well. And then I decided to go to stage and I'm like, oh, okay. So he's like, I'm like, I'm going to have to go to stage. Right. And he's like, Look, probably. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, right. Well, that's yeah. what I'm gonna do. It's what I gotta do, right? But it's it's just interesting. Um it is, know, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those hard things for newbie coaches. Like... And then also coming in now, like, you know, four or five years ago online, it was such a different, such a different game. Like it was easier to get online clients. Yeah. It wasn't as prevalent, you know, there wasn't as many coaches online. Yeah. And now it's like air well, short of COVID, take away COVID, like everybody's an online coach these days. You yeah. know, has and it's just like fuck, like how do we differentiate between, you know, the people? We were talking about this like last night. I, yeah. I was saying how it frustrates me that I, I failed as a coach is a, is a relative term, but I failed in the sense that coaching now is not directly what I do, um, but it is at a point was. But I think my mistake was going to the wrong demographic for face-to-face coaching. Yeah. And I didn't take the risk of going online. So it would have been like six or seven years ago. It wasn't still a, a thought about premise yet. Yeah. Um, and like I had programming I was establishing to work with athletes potentially online because I'd done my SNC and I was actually more looking at like, yeah, bodybuilding coach would be fun, but I just wanted to like Grover. I wanted to improve athletes. Like I just yeah. wanted to know how great athletes wanted to be better and got better. It's like I was working with boxers and powerlifters, um, uh, some basketballers and then just like gen pop. But the, the rent versus the rent versus splitting up with the girlfriend at the time, all the bills fell on me then yeah. to keep the department yeah. I was in. And I was just like, trying to work with 10 or 15 individual athletes wasn't as successful as if I just sold my soul and just went with like 30 or 40 gen pop, like here's a $30 program, like come in for an hour session. I don't work that way. I want to, I want to track you and keep all your data and understand things. Um, 
but it sort of just fell by the wayside. I just, I took the, I don't say the safer route, but a more healthy option. Yeah, and you then eventually, for you at that time, it makes sense, man. At yeah, end, exactly. At the end of the day, like we all need to look after ourselves first, right? Yeah. I mean, even as coaches, that's not what we do. Let's be real. But, you know, it's kind of like that that's the premise. And it's like, dude, if you, that, you know, you have to do what you have to do. Like, you, yeah, well, yeah. No one can. And the, thing, the thing is, though, like knowledge from then has gotten so much better. It's just that, that like I just, now with matter and going down that route, it's going to be my, like what I focus on. Um, but like seeing the shit that I see is it kills me. Cause I'm like, that's so dumb and it's so bad, but also like, I'm not coaching myself to like take on people to help correct that. It's just like, yeah. I just rather put out information that people can utilize. I'm like, my brain's free. Just use it. Like I get nothing from this, except you get some information. So like when I see dumb shit that just get out there and I was like, ah, oh, how are you succeeding? How yeah. are you making, how are you making money? Man, you, yeah right and so that's that's the thing it's like we just sort of sit back and look at it and we're like really like but now <laughs> <laughs> and then like, like well it was a thing right because it's like you know the the evolution of instagram and online coaching was people putting up their own lifting and then getting clients and then people putting up their clients whether it be lifting or a result and then you know getting clients and then we have all these influencers started to come through where like, you know, these people that were in some sort of shape started posting themselves, you know, abs out, boobs out, bum out, yeah. you know, like ripped back out, fucking quads galore, like everything, guys and yeah. girls. Like it, it's not, it's not either or it's both, yeah. you know, doing like selling effectively or well, sex, right? Cause that's what yeah. we know as like sex, as I say, sex sells and it yes. works. It's, it's an unfortunate thing, but you know, I guess it's what people want to see. And I mean, at the same time, we know here's that my green tea and here's my ass. Yeah. Well, oh, right. But it's like, yeah. Like I remember like the, was it the green X was it X 50 T or whatever it was that came out and everyone was losing their shit. <laughs> and then fucking all, all those brands that came out, man. But then it's like on the flip side, then people would turn around and say, well, no, if we're going to work with a coach, we do want to see that they're in shape or that they're strong yeah. or that they're able to do what it is that they're coaching. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like initially it was, like I look like this. If you want to look like this too, do my program. Yeah. To I look like this, and I'm just showing you, hey, this is what I look like because I do literally what I preach. But yeah. I will create a program for you to get a similar or a better result for yourself. Yeah. Like it's a weird world, man. Yeah. The the weird funnel from that though is like, like let's look at Dolph for instance. Variety of clientele. Uh, in terms of like he's got actors he's got boxers he's got mm. cyclists he's got bodybuilders he's got powerlifters all of which like are outside the realm of things he does yeah. but he knows yeah. them so it's like it's super weird because like you don't want to if you just use your image to sell your physique then you get narrowed into a funnel of like well that's all you get because yeah. well I'm a, I'm a physique guy so I'm only going to get physique competitors or I'm just a powerlifter I'm well is that all you do is that all you yeah. want to do like do you have other other realms to offer and things like that so it it um it is a, it's a weird weird concept it's not concept but it's a weird time yeah well i mean i can understand i think you know niching your market in in a sense so it's like you know a lot of like physique coaches would only want obviously physique competitors right or yeah. physique based clients so like in that aspect it makes sense but having that diversity in clientele makes it very hard to advertise too <laughs> yeah like yeah you know what I mean? Unless you're advertising the clients themselves and using their, yeah. you know, their profiles and stuff and saying, Hey, look, this is what my client does. This is the variety of clients that I have. You know, like how, how is it that you advertise for a variety of clients? If you're going to try and promote it yourself, like, you know, promote yourself to get clients. It's just a, it's a weird, weird, weird thing. Social media. Fucking hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, um, it's, it's great if you use it for the right reasons as, as a tool to deliver, I guess, ideas, uh, meta ideas, concepts, theories, novel concepts, client data, information, things like that. Like if you share it for the right reasons, but yeah, it's a, it's a, a fucking weird world to navigate if you're just on there to get likes and, and fucking whatever else you do. Yeah. Like people complaining about like wanting to get followers and stuff like that. And that's the conversation I have with a lot of coaches, actually. It's funny. So if you're like an online coach, listen to this. And this is what sort of I've employed and a lot of people have employed that I speak to. And it seems to work quite nicely. Do not worry about likes and followers. Worry about saves and shares. <laughs> if your posts are getting saves and getting shares and the content you're posting is towards your current following, not new followers. Yeah. By, by definition, you're going to get new followers. <laughs> yeah. As soon as I changed that principle in my um, content creation and the way I thought about things, 
Mm -hmm. I think I, I think I've added like a hundred followers in like a month. <laughs> like, yeah. you've seen my statistics; they go through the roof. Yeah. And honestly, I don't. The only thing I changed was targeting my current market, like my current followers, and like they've been following me for a while. I want to get them in on as clients, or you know, have conversations with them, get to know them. Yeah. yeah. What content's going to target them? And then, okay, bang, I've got four new followers. I'm like, right, <laughs> that worked. Yeah. Okay. That wasn't my intent, but I'll take it. <laughs> Come at me, bro. Yeah, literally. So it's just like, you know, focus on your current following and how you can help them and just let it fall and you're going to get more, you're going to get more followers and then hopefully more clients. Yeah. I mean, I, I treat it, I treat it as, like we said the other week, it was like uh, in terms of like podcasts or programs, like if I help one person, well, it's the same way I sort of look at, look at um, socials in terms of just getting presence out there of people knowing what I think about is that if I can get one person to engage and communicate with them like they're a soon to be client or just someone who I want to discourse, like have discourse with, yeah. then that's going to make them feel, I'm not trying to make them feel something. It's not trying to like manipulate them. It's just creating something more of a, a community of conversation than just like, here's my shit, like it. Like, yeah, for sure. I don't just want you, I don't want you to just like it. I, like, if you have a different idea, if you have a different opinion, a different position, like, come at me with it in a way that we can civilly discuss civil art, have a civil discussion. Yeah. Um, and it's like, it, it creates what the whole premise of it was for to create dialogue between people in different locations and open up conversation. Like that's literally why things like social media, Facebook and Instagram were created because people existed in far different campuses and different universities and, and different yeah, groups. Yeah, or just the way to connect them. Yeah, and yeah, just connect them. And so, yeah, it's like why the movie is called the social network. <laughs> exactly. It's like when you're when your presence is purely just for you to get likes and you to post our photos, it's, it drives me mad because these people are like, you see these people that obsessively comment on their stuff. I'm like, dude, they don't care. Like they're not they're not replying to you to like to actually build a community of people they want to speak to. It's just yeah. because you're giving them their vanity hit and you're giving them like reactions. Yeah, you give them I would them rather have ego boost. Yeah, it's like I'd rather have half of that following and actually have people to talk to and like engage with them like oh, you saw me post this like theory on a psychological concept. Well, what's your opinion? Is it the same? Is it different? Do you have a different link for me? Do you have research for me to go like shift my position? Or perhaps like you want to expand further and I can show you some links. Yeah, well, it's, it's literally like what we were speaking about on the last podcast. It's just, you know, it's okay not to know and it's okay to, you know, learn something new. There's nothing wrong with that. So mm -hmm. if someone disagrees and, you know, they're going to be polite about it, you know, usually if they come from a, a, a higher position or, you know, like in the hierarchy type scenario, like if they know something that you don't and you get to learn what's wrong with that. Like that's sort of yeah. the point, right? We want to learn so we can pass on knowledge. Correct. It's kind of the dream. <laughs> what? Well, that's a, that's a fucking, that's a, a very heavy way to start. We've, we've gone ham on uh, some, some serious convo. Yeah. What else is going on? <laughs> no, man, same shit, different day. Lockdown, my hamstrings are sore. So I didn't train last week because I had that cold. Um, so hopefully everyone can actually hear me a bit more clearly now. Uh, I probably talk a bit soft, so it's just me naturally talking. Apologies. I'm trying to sound like, you know, the really uh, deep voice dude from Boyster Men. So it's, it's just phone porn voice. Yeah, literally. It's just, that's why we do podcasts and, you know, the YouTube channel is just there for shits and giggles because we are voices <laughs> made for radio. Um, <laughs> what are you wearing? Yeah, Slacks? Like, <laughs> yeah. What should it's I like, be oh, wearing? It's like I'm wearing my hoodie and I'm wearing nothing below, but you can't see. So <laughs> Uh, you know, upstairs party, well, upstairs business, downstairs party. But um, yeah, so lockdown, didn't train last week, trained this week in my garage. My hamstrings are cooked. They're sore as fuck. It was cramping. I had um, I had a few consult calls yesterday and then I had a podcast in my hand. Between my, my headphones going off, like they just decided to turn off mid-podcast and my hamstrings cramping at the same time. Mate, it was great. <laughs> just, this just, is just a fucking shit show. <laughs> <laughs> which is horrible nailing this week absolutely slain yeah, I mean you know besides that things are going well besides being in lockdown <laughs> again um, yeah I can't complain did some upper body yesterday boobs are a bit sore usual <laughs> a little bit a little bit of doms see how we go lats are a bit sore it's like oh I can feel it but we'll see how we go man but uh, you know I posted up the quad thing yesterday and then actually posted up about my seminar that I'm going to be doing in September that, already yeah. had I think eight seven eight people want to book in for a ticket so that's awesome <laughs> did not expect Sweet. that i was sort of sitting there for the first couple of hours after i posted it and i'm like oh yeah this isn't going to get anything and then 11 30 for some reason 11 30 is peak time for people wanting tickets to seminars like apparently 
We Everyone, take it. Yeah, I was just like, Man. okay, cool. <laughs> this works nicely. So that's what we're doing. But they're apparently like reading the news now that's coming up on my other screen here. Uh, we've been extended another week for lockdown, so that's great. So let's see if we can even get to fucking September and be open. So this should be interesting. <sighs> So yeah, we've got um, another seven, another seven days of lockdown apparently. So this is gonna be fun. I mean, Netflix and OnlyFans are gonna be making absolute killing. Bruh, I'm tempted to make an OnlyFans. And it's just gonna be me lying in bed with my socks. <laughs> it, fucking, I'm gonna make a dollar, but not of your face, just of no. your socks. <laughs> it's literally like knees down. <laughs> yeah, these are for sale. <laughs> yeah, literally. Who wants to buy these? Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, like literally, like it's getting to that point where like seven days again so we'll see what happens because i think i've put the i've put the seminar on for the 12th sunday the 12th so if we do another seven days from tomorrow the 12th to the 19th it's gonna be touch and go two or three weeks after that so let's see yeah there's i got a feeling there's gonna be a lot of things getting cancelled in the coming um coming months yeah you're not you're not wrong no actually I, you know what i need to know i wonder if people are listening please slide into my dms and tell me if you do a <laughs> if you do a seminar in person would you rather because i'm going to do slides right obviously put them on tv screen and have them up star wipes and shit yeah pretty much make it all pretty and shit would you <laughs> would you rather have like you know when we go to uni you know when we print out the slides and you put like a slide three slides per page and it's got the notes would you yeah, rather yeah. A, would you rather a printout with like that format so you can take notes on the slides or would you just rather the actual slides sent to you post seminar? Hmm. So I could do a probably pre. No, I don't want to do a pre seminar because I want to surprise them. So, like, <laughs> I wonder, like, would it be worth sending the like sending the slides post seminar? Like, I don't want to do both. Like, I feel like that's overkill. I feel like one mm. or the other. Like me, I'm old school. I like paper. So as much as yeah. the, the environment doesn't like me having paper, I like having paper. So, um, you know. I like, care I like, about your trees. I yeah, well, I, 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 like I said, I'm old school. Like yourself, like you're writing on palm cards. Like that's how I studied. Yeah. And, like, I write notes. You know, I've got fucking yeah. tons of notebooks. So it's kind of like, is that what people still like to do? Like, or is it kind of cool and hip to just bring your own notebook, write notes, and then get the slides afterwards? I talked to a few teachers and stuff, right? And it turns out like, Every kid nowadays has a laptop and an iPad to take to school because everything has to be interactive. Like you can't teach anymore, like just on the chalkboard or the blackboard. I'm like, what is happening? Yeah, when right. Did that become a thing. Yeah, right. Like that's so that's why like, I'm curious to know. Like, is if you do have an opinion, please DM me and let me know just so I can work it out. But yeah, and also send pictures, send pictures of feet with socks. Yeah, uh, socks, not feet, socks. Just <laughs> socks. socks. I'll, I'll load them on One. my. I'll, I'll load them on my OnlyFans as my own. Worn so, post gym socks. He's awful. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, man. That's, <laughs> that's really about it. There's nothing much going on, dude. Like to be real, well, it's a hard time because hopefully, like, like with this, like I said the other week, like the 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 hope that this is at least giving people something to listen to for a few hours. Like, hopefully, it's something just interesting or like you can take something novel away from it that you didn't think about, and you can be like, well, the shitty is everything's going on here. You can at least listen to this for a fucking I don't know ninety minutes and talk with your shit. But yeah, right. It's, it's hard to it's like to excite people when like oh man everyone's just so so that's why that's why i pivoted that post the other night when i was um i was uh, talking about um uh, stress stress reduction i was like i i just feel like emotional uh emotional appraisal research isn't as, as relevant as like putting something about stress reduction out right now because yeah, yeah. everyone's just stressed on edge and like COVID aside is everything else around it like people just business and choppy and just getting frustrated with each other and i was like it's a frustrating time because you want to be able to help people and like put something out that's positive, but then people will come at you for like, Oh, you're positive. Why everything's going to shit. I'm like, yeah, well, I don't know. Like, yeah, well, why add more negativity? Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Right. What's the point of being negative? <laughs> like it doesn't get yeah, you like anywhere. I, <laughs> like it puts out some, put out some research info that might help you like reduce stress and just de-stimulate a little bit. And like, I know with you guys, you've only got five kilometers you can go to. So if there's something that can help in there, like if you have something around like a park, just go be there for five minutes. Yeah, get um, outside. It's actually not too bad yeah. weather-wise the last couple of days, which has been nice. It's a, a pleasant change. We had like an 18 degree, uh, 18 degree, 18 degree sunny day yesterday with a bit of wind, but it's like, oh, hello, sun's back. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and a 20 degree day in Melbourne? What is this? Bad. So this time of year, man, like it's, this is a big deal. Global warming is not a thing. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I'm kidding. It is a thing. Okay, please don't. The hole, the hole is open over Melbourne right now. The ozone is just pure sun. Fucking yeah, literally. Like that's what it's <laughs> gonna be, man. But anyway, 
Should well, we get to some questions? Yeah, I've got some. I've got some good ones. Yeah, um, you're telling me. I'm fucking. I'm scared, bro. Um, I'm. Uh, God damn it! I just had it open up now. It's gone away. Um, archive. Oh, thank God, this shit's simple nowadays. <sighs> Come on. All right, there we go. Does 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 boom. Alrighty. Talk to so me. I got a few good ones. Okay, this will be interesting. Um, time. I'll bring up the ones from last week we didn't answer. Maybe I did get a couple of good ones for this week, but have you got have you got some funnies or you got good like serious ones? Uh, it depends which one you want. What do we want? I got both. We'll start with the funny. We had a pretty serious chat, so let's, let's start with the funny. <laughs> yeah, let's lighten the mood. Sorry, yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> what what you got? Or you want me to go first? I uh, you go first. All right, that's a fine one. I just got to bring it up, you know, so these things happen. All right, well, while you're wasting everyone's time. Um, so, so, considering I put up, so I put up a poll on the weekend about what sort of podcast people like to listen to, more so for my own, you know, the Elite Strength podcast. It's like, yep. do you want solo? Do you want guests only or do you want a mixture of both and i got a ton like two on one do you like yeah. one on one yeah pretty much gang bang like sorry you know you know what i mean like um <laughs> so i've got i had so many people comment <laughs> and talk about two f one m yeah like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> calm down <laughs> we just lost the plot um so we're talking about it's just like i'm like well okay what topics do you want me to talk about being a solo one and naturally you know izzy also known as mum um decided to throw up something so she's like a cooking segment it's like you think i cook like oh, woman it's air, air fries and rice cookers like i don't I, and microwaves like i don't think you understand <laughs> like uh, how, how good do you think i am in the kitchen <laughs> look, bodybuilders and, and trainers learn to cook three different things five different ways yeah and then she's like throwing in hair and makeup it's like beard routine yeah, I did. I've got that a few times, to be quite honest, which was a quite interesting. Um, I think I told someone you don't actually watch it. It's just it's just simply sweat and salt, and that's just like keeps it straight and luscious. Man, that's that's from the one set that I do for Instagram. <laughs> like literally, like that, I don't do anything else. So it's anyway. I was just sitting there, like, man, what is going on right now? Oh, let me find these questions. All right, well, I got one here. Go. On. Okay, so tell us about your back injury. Uh, what made you decide not to get surgery? Okay, so I'll we'll try and... What's that? Go on then. All right, so we'll keep this one quick. Uh, I've talked about it a couple of times before, but not on here, I don't think. Um, so 20, 2012, 2013, 2013. I think it was 21, 2013. I was in a motor vehicle accident, um, like ran a red light. Uh, I was on the way to work. Long story short... Total my car, end up ruining my or destroying my L34, my L45, uh, end up with chronic sciatic nerve degeneration, um, thoracic degeneration, and basically just chronic diagnosis of a disability impairment in my spine. Um, and a lot of the initial suggestions were things like discectomies and fusions. Um, and I just rejected them both um, as it didn't seem logical to me at 21 being someone who trains and who's been an athlete most of his life to then restrict myself to um, fusion or vertebrae fusion, which is essentially what they do is they'll, they'll scoop out the disc um, that sits between the two uh, vertebrae Vertebrae, in your spine. And then basically remove the disc, which is basically like a fluid filled jelly donut um, that helps with lubrication and movement and prevents friction on the joints and basically remove that and fuse the top and bottom discs, uh, sorry, vertebrae between that together now that immediately limits range of motion, mobility, increases the risk of things like osteoarthritis. And I was like, 21, probably not something I want to put up with. If I'm going to be in pain anyway, I'd rather have at least some mobility and try and train around the muscles that exist there instead. So yeah, it was more so like, let's just try and re-strengthen everything else around it. And if it come time to be in 50 or 60 and I've been agonizing pain, then I'll look at getting it. Yeah, I mean... It kind of makes logical sense, right? It's like if you don't necessarily need it straight away, then why do it? It's like well, that was that was a frustrating part for me. Is like to look at me as someone at the time I was twenty one, still playing footy, I was still deadlifting, powerlifting, like going through my explosive list for uh, for league. um, To then just simply go, oh, we're going to cut you open and like um, remove your discs and and fuse you up and that sort of shit. I was like, yeah, I don't want that. Like I'm twenty one, I still want some like functionality in my lower spine. 
Yeah, like basics. I mean, that's kind of what I posted about last Friday in terms of moving into posterior anterior pelvic tilt and probably why you shouldn't do it. But, you know, these things happen. Correcto. Right. Anyway, that was something that interesting. There you go. There you go. So, I mean, that wasn't so much as a fun one as I would have thought, though. No, no I mean, I mean, yeah, no, getting hit by a car is not as fun as you think. Um, All right, let's, let's, let's have a look at this one. If you were stuck on a desert island, <laughs> All right. which, which three songs would you want to listen to? <laughs> oh. Oh. Three songs. <laughs> Three songs. Well, I told Caitlin this morning that she needs to start her day with Tay Tay Shake It Off because no one can have a bad day when you listen to Shake It Off. Don't care who you are. Can't be done. Oh, man, I'm going to really question you on that one. Like, we have to have a chat off camera, bro. Can't be, can't be done. If you can listen to Taylor Swift Shake I It Off. I hate Taylor day, Swift, bro. Yes, yeah, like, so do I. Everything like that, is that, about that. it. Everything that is, is not squinty eyes and ex boyfriends, but that, that one that, that is not a song that's going to get me going in the morning, mate. I'm telling you, mostly because I watch it, I watch The Rock do his limp sticky battles to it, and it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. I feel that's like pretty that, good. I feel like you know, when you wake up in the morning, you know, when you've had a really bad sleep, and yeah. like you wake up the next morning and something small, so insignificant that happens in your life, but it irritates you and it ruins you for the rest of the day. It could be that like you run out of toothpaste, it could be that your towel's damp from the night before, it could be something so fucking. <laughs> That song, that, 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 that song would set me off. <laughs> like, we need I, to have I, a live camera I, session. Man, I, I would lose my shit. <laughs> I would throw my phone through a wall. Like, the song would be playing on a radio. My phone's still going through a wall. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, all right, two other, two other songs. Two other songs that I would that go. I would go. Oh, God. Did he, how do you narrow that down to three songs? Hey, man, I'm just um, asking the questions, all right? Yeah, you're gonna have to throw in um, Yin Yang Twins Whisper. Don't even know why it just came to my head, but I'm going Yin Yang Twins Whisper. Um, for all you millennials out there, you won't have any idea what it is. Yeah, get on Spotify, um, type in Yin Yang Twins, and listen to any song from the Yin Yang Twins. Yeah, well, yeah, that too. That too. Um, oh God, I mean, you got to get some Usher in there as well. I mean, you've got a white chick, you've got some twins in there. You got to have like a, you got to have some Usher in there somewhere. Oh. Actually, I'm gonna go Dre. I'm gonna go anything by Dre at that point. Like you're gonna you know, some NWA or some Dre, like some good, just it's some good, good ghetto rap. Mix between basic <laughs> white girl and good ghetto rap. So. <laughs> You've covered all genres. We've got <laughs> white girl. Yeah. We've got some yeah. R and B. Just you know, some some just chilling out. You know, we'll just relax. Yeah. And then old school gangster. Just Proper ghetto not. rap. Why, why not? Why not? Yeah, I mean, fucking. Why not? I think if I was to pick, oh fuck, if I was to pick three songs, I mean, for me, forget about Dre is always there. That's like my PB song. That's my my go. Like that. That's a non-negotiable. When I start my crit walk in the gym and no one else can hear the music except me, and I just send you the video, I yeah. just imagine, I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just so for, off my shoes, baby. So for those listening, like last night, he's in the gym wearing his Jordans, and he sends me a video of him just like crit walking. I don't know if you if you don't know what a crit walk is, like go ahead, butt the wall, ten sets, ten reps, one minute, first, <laughs> and make sure that wall's Correct concrete. Yourself. Yeah, make sure that wall's concrete. Um, for those that do, like you could imagine, just like you know, dusting the shoe and then walking off with no music going because they're in a commercial gym and he's got headphones on, which has been a very interesting, <laughs> a very, very interesting look for people. Um, but anyway, so let's find, okay, let's find a more serious question. Actually, no, first, yeah, so forget about Dre. I mean, yep. like, because I feel like, I feel like it needs some sort of like island type song. Like I just can't think of any because maybe like you can, uh, nah. Yeah, so this is oh. hard. Like, this is hard. Oh. I feel I'd probably still put NWA in there just for fun, like fuck the police because I love the song. Fair but, call. Yeah, and like I don't know. I don't know if I want to put some slow romantic shit in there. It depends if I'm stuck by myself, like that's not gonna help me. <laughs> like I feel like I'm gonna need to be angry. Put in some like Lincoln Park and really mix it up a little bit. You know, a- anything from like hybrid theory, like works for me. Good album, good album. Yeah, anyone like, anyone like, born that outside of that generation does not know what Lincoln Park is or, or what or not know what hybrid theory is, like, yeah, like get it on your playlist. In fact, I know there's a playlist you can listen to that actually has it on there. So <laughs> I'm waiting for you to plug it. Fire, I've given you like <laughs> how many opportunities can I give you to plug that fucking playlist? Bro, I'm not gonna anyway. lie though. 16 people, like seeing 16 people, like not just not just listen to it, but it shows people who like it. I was like, oh man, that is like Oh, that's cool as shit. I was listening to it um yesterday, actually, believe it or not. 
Yeah. During, during my during my training and dying it was great the funny part is like it's not it's not just one i made up it was like it's just a mixture of playlists from like my footy career different training playlists i've had and then songs are just stuck in my head they're like that gets me in the zone and i was mixing yeah, yeah. together i was like cool this is just like that's it well yeah right it's like kind of like you're just listening to different music that comes on randomly on your ipod oh your ipod yeah. your phone and you're just like well oh yeah that works i'm just gonna put that in a playlist now and see what happens yeah exactly um right. i've got a serious one for you this may work okay. nicely for you time management tips and tricks actually i think we did that one didn't we to get a better we did that last week. We did that one. yeah so hold on. some days i'm off doing things am i lazy or am i oh, so hold on. some days i'm off doing things am i lazy sack so am i a lazy sack the a is not in there or is it low dopamine <laughs> Some days I'm off doing that. As in, like, I'm, I'm off. I'm just not in the mood to do them. Yeah, I think so. I think it's supposed to be, like, off kilter. <clears throat> no, see, I don't think so. I think it depends. Because if the thing that you're doing is in line with the motivation as to why you're doing it, and you've really, like, the 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 outcome you want from it, the goals that you've set up for, for doing it, generally, dopamine as a, as a dopaminergic pathway and reward system incites you as we for anyone who's watched um dr huberman recently uh established dopamine is more of actually a motivating hormone that is just a reward hormone which is becoming a very cool concept in um reward cycle behaviors um it actually is showing us to stimulate the motivation to do something because we want that feeling again rather than just a reward behavior um you're being shown to be motivated to execute the thing that you know is going to feel good and obviously have that outcome so in a sense it's possible that the behavior, the action you're, you're trying to do, you haven't quite affirmed or aligned with why you're doing it. And it's leading to either some miscommunicating pathways or simply just it's not in line enough with why you want to do it. There's also some times where it's just like, you don't have to be working 24 seven. Like if you're finding there are days that come up randomly or, or what have you, that you just feel down or you just feel like you don't have the energy start scheduling actual down days and schedule some de-stimulation um, because you can lead to burnout. As much as we're passionate about things, if you've got a full-time job, but you've also got hobbies you're working on the side, punch in some down days that actually boost, uh, if you saw my post last night, stress reduction theory and uh, attention rest or rejuvenation theory all align with reducing cognitive load and improving your cognitive thought process, your attention retention um, and stress reduction. So if you can schedule in those down days through, you know, whatever it is I said in the video, uh, it can help with that as well. So like, you're not lazy, um, but also it might just mean that you reflect a bit on why it is you're not feeling like doing it. Yep. Okay. I mean, not much really more to add. I feel like when it comes to those questions, I'm just going to let Ben talk and just sit here and be like, <laughs> I agree. I, I concur. All right, well, I've got a good one for you. And go on, this will be interesting. Um, do, 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 do. When doing blood work, what do you usually request on the panel? Do you prioritize liver stats? Oh, man. Blood, so blood work is interesting. Um, it, this also does depend on natural enhanced and also if you're getting regular blood work, so whether you're enhanced or not. So if you're not enhanced, relatively healthy, you can get blood work probably one, I suggest once every six months, if you're training and all that sort of stuff and, you know, dieting either up or down, because there are stresses that are placed on the body. So, you know, on the liver and the kidneys and that sort of stuff. So it's worth getting the bloods. And especially if you have Medicare and stuff, it's all inclusive. Um, so definitely liver, you want liver count, you want um, kidneys always checked. That's both natural and enhanced. Um, and then usually if, you haven't had them checked before. I always suggest like thyroid. So T3, T4 um, and TSH. And it's really hard to, con like we said last podcast, it's hard to convince a doctor to test all yeah. three. They tend to just look at the one TSH and think that everything's okay. Um, they do work like they work together, but they also do work independently of each other. So being able to get all three tested is handy. And then just a basic blood, uh, blood panel. So like what blood cell count and all that sort of stuff and red blood yep. cell stuff and just making sure everything's okay. But with my enhanced guys, I tend to get a little bit more detail, um, a little bit more in depth with the liver, a little bit more in depth with the kidneys. Obviously yep. taking exogenous hormones can place a lot more stress on these uh, factors or on these organs. Correct. So it's not ideal. Um, and then obviously supplementing with over-the-counter subs that you can take to help mitigate the stress that's induced from exogenous hormone use. 
Mm -hmm. uh, is a big thing. And I think it's one thing that's probably not taken into account by a lot of coaches that do PED work. Alderon, Tadka? Yeah, so, okay. yeah, they they help. Um, yeah. Or they, they can help, I guess. It's probably the better yeah. way. Uh, the research doesn't show too much for, like, milk thistle. Um, yeah. It, it's like... Well, I have some, seen it a lot. Like, yeah, it, yeah, like some, some people it can and some people it doesn't. Tadka is a pretty good one. Uh, NAC, NAC is a pretty good one as well. Um, you can do glutathione injections now. A lot of those, you know, those health uh, shops where you can go in and do IV drips and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so they're very popular in the US. Um, you can yes, do they them are. Down, I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can do them. A lot of the the injections and shit. Yeah, they're getting popular here. So uh, I'm still sort of deliberating whether I want to look at the research, but like glutathione injections are pretty good for the liver um, and pretty good for just a whole stack of other like uh, biochemical processes. It's just whether that one injection and how long it would last. And if you're already healthy and don't have glutathione issues, and if you're supplementing with NAC, um, you may not need it, but yeah. I mean, it probably doesn't hurt to have if you can afford to do it. Yeah. Um, and then there's things like astralgus for blood pressure and um, oh, what's another one that I like to use? Uh, tons like magnesium and stuff like that, which is pretty straightforward. Um, yeah. So yeah, definitely with blood work, man, like you always want to be getting like everything you can if you're on exogenous hormones. So there's a lot of tests yeah. that um, the doctors won't do. They'll just do like a blood panel and you have to sort of say, yeah. like, I'm on testosterone or something along those lines. Um, I always encourage full disclosure with your doctor. <laughs> like don't beat around the yeah. bush. I know it can be nerve wracking, but the more that the doctor knows, the easier it is for them to understand why. And they, they have a duty of care and privacy, right? Like they're not going to go. Yeah. Right and, the, and honestly, the first thing that they're going to like, obviously say is like, don't do steroids or something like that. And it's like, cool. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's their job. We get it. Yeah. Like, thank you. We, we but, can move past that now. Yeah. Like, thank you. But like you telling me not to do them doesn't mean I'm not going to do them. So, can we move to the next phase of keeping me healthy <laughs> and like yeah. help me, help me yeah. get my bloods. But um, yeah, I've got like, a, I've got a huge list that I use. Um, actually, initially my initial list was from Dalton, funnily enough, way back in the day, I've still got it go. um, for bloods that I check. And then I've just added things that I want to like, have a look at when I get my clients to do their blood. Mm -hmm. work. Yeah. Sweet. Um, all right. All right. All right. Seems as how you're moving into a sort of bodybuilding style regiment these days and looking at competing with posing and whatnot. Um, I, moods, bro. I don't actually want to compete. I just like what's competing. I just want to send you with my pants off. It's just a direct message, like thread of just yeah. I just dude. I just need to be appreciated. <laughs> Someone love me for me. Fucking love me. <laughs> um, most important habits for the bodybuilding lifestyle and how to implement those habits. Right. You're asking the wrong person. I'm not a bodybuilder. <laughs> I mean, you're getting towards it. We're shifting, yeah? Man. Yeah, go on. Uh, you can, I'll let you answer that one first. All right. Um, you are the look, bodybuilder. The, the first thing I think in terms of uh, the, the lifestyle habit is, is monotony. Um, like, it sounds daunting. People hate it. Um, but... Success is found in discipline. Whether you agree with it or not, success is found in discipline. Discipline to repeat the same thing over and over and over and not be discouraged or pissed off or uh, annoyed or need a change up or things like that. Like these people who, if you want to change up your program, do this. Discipline in all aspects of bodybuilding is monotonous. It is the repeat of the same shit over and over and over again. Um, you might change some phases. You might change some food, maybe. Um, you might schedule yourself in like, a, like I'll, have, I'll have out nights where I'm just like, all right, coming out of COVID and stuff, I'll support a local business, go get some burgers or something like that. I'll make it count. I'll fit it. I know that I have the calories left, even in off season. I'm not just going to blow out me a pig. Um, so that is a big one for me um, is understanding that everything is, it's going to be monotonous and schedule your damn self. Just get a schedule. We said it last week, but just get a fucking schedule. Just get a schedule that you can at least understand. Right, are you going to train at night? Cool. How, how much time are you allocating to your sessions? No more than 90 minutes? Sweet. Are you doing posing? Do you have cardio? Um, are you meal prepping your food the day before, three days in advance? What are you doing in those aspects so that you can optimize each window of time um, and allocate the best possible efficiency that you have to give it? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, I think the biggest one out of that that I've started to really appreciate the most is routine. So even though mm -hmm. I've, always been, I've always been a routine-based person, um, yeah, it's just having those a lot of times and obviously also running an online business. So it makes things a lot easier and less stressful and then not deviating from the routine unless something happens like an emergency or something like that. I think you have to be a bit stubborn 
with yourself yeah. in your own sort of routine. It's kind of like you might be tempted to do things or, you know, for example, like here in Melbourne, well, for here in Melbourne, the weather being as it is, it's kind of like I need to get my walking in and get steps in, for example. And it's like, I'll either walk first thing in the morning when I get up, if I can, or if, uh, or at the end of the day, once I've done all my work and it's dark, but then it's like during the day, it's like, I'll look outside and it's sunny and it's, you know, 18 degrees. I'm like, fuck, I want to go for a walk. But, you know, yep. my routine or my schedule would suggest, well, no, I need to do my work or I need to do this, I yep. need to do that. It's like, which one's more important at that particular time? It's kind of like, I can always get my steps in. I just have to do it later when it's a bit cooler versus getting potentially sunburnt. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, yeah, yeah, it, it can be tricky. And that's, I guess, a small, it's a very, very small sacrifice in a way, but, yeah, you know, it's understanding that it's for the bigger goal, not the the small acute goal that we have. Yeah. The I think goal. the other part too is, um, is learning to say no, um, whether it be friends, family, like, I have heaps of I have heaps of family and stuff that just give me shit or whatever. If I say you no, know, it's like, oh, you never see us do this. You never come to do it. I'm like, yeah, I don't. Firstly, I don't want to really. Yeah. <laughs> um, but secondly, like, short of someone being dead, I just I don't have time. Like, yeah. if it's if it's just a if it's just an unnecessary catch up because someone's like, we don't see us anymore. Like, it doesn't mean I hate you. I'm not mad at you. It's just like in my head, like I have things that need to get done, especially now with uni and training and the business and all that sort of stuff. Like, I just have. 24 hours in a day, allocated times to get things done. Um, I, I, I can't just come hang out for the sake of it just because you're bored. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not that, mad at you. Yeah, that's like, wrong. Lifestyle, right? Yeah, I'm like, oh, I just, no. Yeah. And like, initially, you get a lot of pushback at that first on, I found. Like, you get a lot of pushback. Eventually, people just either get mad at you or they come to terms with it. That's it. Yeah. No, totally fair, dude. Um, All right, what do you got? What have I got? Let's go into a, should we go into a more serious one? Yeah. All right, let's have a look. Foam rolling. This would be a good one. Uh, so foam rolling, is it effective? Is it ineffective? Is it worth doing? Is it not worth doing? Well, you are the rehab guy. I, I personally enjoy deep holding a roll. Um, I see I see people just like pump out the fucking like back and forward and then they get up and they're done. But I generally try and find the spot in which um, I find the pain or the tightness and we'll try and breathe through it and just like um, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. I'll move through the breath, relax, move through the breath, relax. Um, generally try and get some movement before I start lifting um, or like finally like the, the ITB or something like that and just roll the shit out of it slowly and deep as opposed to just like, I'm just slightly touching it because it's sore. No. Yeah, so it's interesting. Like the research doesn't support a lot of recovery modalities, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway, it doesn't support it yet. It's not to say in 10 to 20 years, you know, the research will come out and they'll find another parameter to be able to work out and dissect all this stuff and be like, oh, no, nah, it does definitely do something. And this is the research showing that how, how it does it and why it does it. At the moment, there's no real physiological response to um, a lot of the stuff that happens. Uh, over a prolonged period of time so it's very acute so like a foam roller yes. for example um, going over muscles and stuff for a period of time will you know potentially loosen off or help loosen that muscle and you know the joint that's attached to and you know make it a bit easier to move but it could only be it's only for a very temporary period of time same thing with massage guns and that sort of stuff it's funnily enough same thing with like deep tissue massage same thing with um cupping same thing with needling uh like the, the they make you feel good. So from a psychological aspect, if you feel better, fucking go for it, do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? If it, if it doesn't affect your ability to lift like more weight, if that's the goal or, you know, more reps, if that's the goal, and if it doesn't affect your, your ability in the gym or at yeah. your goal, go for it. Just don't probably claim the science behind it. And I think that's always been my biggest pet peeve um, with a lot of this stuff. It's just kind of like, a lot of therapists, a lot of rehab specialists, a lot of coaches, trainers, PTs, all of them, they're sort of saying that, you know, these modalities work and this is why. And it's kind of like, nah, it doesn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Like it really doesn't. Hold but, on. But, but like a placebo, if you feel good doing it, yeah, do it. <laughs> if yeah. it doesn't, if it doesn't put you at, at a risk, it's not detrimental yeah. to you, go for it. But if you say that you're going to foam roll and then you lift 10 kilos less, well, then it's a problem. Yeah. Yes. Makes sense. So it's kind of like, yeah. it, it's no point doing it if you're going to lift less. Um, and it's kind of like my position that I stand when it comes to people doing strength sports or like hypertrophy and that sort of stuff. And then they start going to do yoga to increase their range of motion and stuff like that. It's kind of like, 
your fascia and your muscle is meant to be tight. It's kind of the point. It's what you're doing. Loosening it up and loosening it off is doing the exact opposite to you want it, what you want it to do. So you're putting yourself and your joints at more risk by increasing the range of motion because it's now going to go through a range of motion it doesn't need to go through potentially. Yeah. And it hasn't been through. Whereas when you're lifting and stuff like that, your body only goes through the range of motion it needs to go through to strengthen that particular muscle and the joint attached and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So like, don't, like yeah. I find not becoming hyper tense, um, living and, and moving through a range of motion that is necessary for the lifting stuff I do and not to become round or compromised in stiffness, exactly. but getting in a, a natural flexibility that benefits the training that I do and everyday yeah. life. Yeah. Outside of that, I'm not a dancer that needs to hyperextend and hyperflex. No. Certain parts of the that's body. exactly right. You just need to be mobile enough to do what you do every day. Yeah. Exactly. short of that you don't need more like you don't get yeah. extra branding points for more and if anything it could be detrimental if you're lifting heavy weight so just something yeah. to think about um okay let's see what else we have got um yeah you said you had a, uh, an interesting one oh, you, you had me scared you said there was something good to bring up that uh, you said there was some fucked up ones in there uh yeah probably hold on <laughs> Um, I will answer this one though. Uh, you blokes read, uh, I don't know if you have, but I would suggest it. Uh, you blokes read or listened to the mindful athlete by George Mumford. Um, I haven't, it is definitely on my list in terms of, um, understanding flow state training and uh, performance. Um, so George Mumford is a doctor of sports psychology from the university of Massachusetts. Um, he actually worked with, uh, Phil Jackson, um, in the Bulls run during the 90s. Yep. Um, did a lot with him in understanding mindfulness and mindful practice around athletes to optimize emotional intelligence, um, cognitive reappraisal, um, being in the moment. And the idea is it, it aligns a lot with uh, flow state science. And so if you can get a mindful athlete who's very present and very in the situation, not thinking too far in the future, not thinking behind them if, with mistakes, it creates a very optimal environment to stimulate flow state. Um, so it's in my probably top five next listens as an audio book. Um, unfortunately, haven't got to it yet. But uh, in saying that, do recommend reading it because as an athlete or performance-based athlete, athlete or trainer, definitely good. Um, to pair with it, I would say listen to The Art of Impossible. I just finished it. It is fucking phenomenal. Um, Steve Cobbler and they he runs a TED Talk and now a performance guide on flow state science the actual 20 years of flow state science so easily the top two books in that aspect for for what i'm trying to talk about there yeah. Uh, but yeah it's yeah. definitely something to to get in and listen to if you can if you're curious on flow state and mindfulness sounds good to me um, i can't say that i've listened to it so i have no idea what's going on <laughs> yeah, the stuff with the thing and the lady and yeah, the guy no, to be honest like I, I don't I, know if, if, if i yeah yeah if i get to it i promise you i will but no i have not unfortunately <laughs> sorry um this was an interesting one i think this could i guess apply to both bodybuilding and powerlifting superior yeah. go-to food on comp day oh <laughs> this one because this, one... this is, i know there's a bit of controversy in the bodybuilding world with this one and what seeing people eat sort of backstage before a show and stuff versus um powerlifting i guess it's probably a bit more simplistic but at the same time there are a few things that people need to consider would you like to start? Yeah, there's some interesting methods <laughs> I see that it, like I've seen guys load, uh, triglyceride load on things like fats, like donuts and muffins and all this stuff uh, pre-show to fill out with the intention that they're triglyceride loading to fill up the muscle as much as possible with dense calories. And obviously carbohydrates exist inside that sort of food anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you see things like um, peanut butters as like a spread choice or like a, 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 a sodium dense, which the sodium makes a little bit of sense. Um, and then that those, those sort of food options that at the same time, you're then conflicting with uh, the efficiency of digestion and uptake of the food. So it's like, do you really want to slow it down with things like a, a, a fat soluble food spread or like a, a cake or something like that. Um, and then you're also including the carbohydrates when you could go with a much simpler option, um, like eating your normal food across the day, but backstage pre pump up, you're looking at like glucose sugars, simplistic carbohydrates, easily digestible, won't cause fermentation or bloating, won't cause disruption in posing, um, will easily uptake and uh, re-regulate and fill out muscle cells. So 
those to me make more sense. Um, but I've seen both, and it's. Well, I would have like, thought filling intramuscular gl- triglycerides. You do pre-show, like you do it. You know, probably the day before, a couple of days before, because it holds a little what, bit, yeah, and then you know you'd start to fill with just glycogen. Yeah, I that's, what, that's what I always. That's what I the, the route I would take, but um, unless you can yeah. obviously, to- unless you're you know, unless you can tolerate taking intramuscular triglycerides so as long as you can take fats on the day you know it doesn't affect your overall look and doesn't affect your digestion because you know there yeah. are those people that you know can have it and be like oh yeah like this yeah is fine. for sure yeah like like nutella for example like i used to fucking eat nutella before i play footy it never fucking affected me so yeah yeah you know what i mean so i wonder it just wouldn't be something like i would introduce newly a novelty 100 oh, yeah yeah like you want to be if you're doing the doing day it. you're introducing muffins and you've never had muffins in co- in prep yeah. what are you doing like that's oh yeah of course yeah don't deviate table. from what you've always been having that's 100 yeah. 100 so it's like but when you do your mock peak week right when you know if you're prepping and you should be hopefully getting into a point where you're a couple of weeks out at least and you can yeah play with a peak week and see what works yes. and what doesn't or you use a like a warm-up show if that's what you're doing um, to play with different protocols for peak week, but you know, you'd be playing with the same foods and just manipulating the amounts. Right? Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah. hundred percent. That makes sense. Well, it's funny from a powerlifting standpoint, you'd be surprised every time you go to a powerlifting comp, man, everyone has lollies because they're like, yeah, like definitely need to have lollies because glucose and you're like, yeah, but lollies, I don't know if you've ever had a bag of lollies, but what's the first thing that you do when you finish a bag of lollies? Was you go take a shit because <laughs> <laughs> it has a very interesting laxative effect. So um, it's not major and some people, again, tolerate it fine. Most don't, especially yeah. when they're in a stressed and aroused state and their digestion is just going haywire. It's kind of like, yes, let's probably have things that aren't going to do that to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually quite enjoy salt and vinegar chips or rice crackers. Um, depending on yeah. how you tolerate fat. If you don't tolerate fat too well, like saturated fats, don't have the chips, just have rice crackers. Honestly, peckish, yeah. you know, get salt and vinegar ones. The salt's obviously going to replenish some of the um, electrolytes that you've lost through your sweat, through warming up and being nervous mm-hmm. and shit. You know, have a sports drink on hand, it's always handy. Uh, depending on how long the day is going to be, don't change anything that you have done in the past because it's like you've eaten a full day of food and gone to the gym or you've, you know, gone to the gym and had a full day of food before. So, there's no real change. It's just, if you're on yeah. weight, you don't need to worry about anything. Just fucking eat the food that you normally eat. Take your time. And yeah. You will, you know, if it's a full day, you are going to have to digest the food and go to the bathroom either way. You can't really avoid yeah. that. Let's not take foods in that are going to speed that up. <laughs> Let's just yeah. let things that do their natural process and like don't alter it or change it. Pretty straightforward. You don't want to be about to be called out to then go, oh fuck, I've got to go dump real quick and then I'll come back. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I, I just love watching everyone like take handfuls of lollies and then you watch them like 20 minutes later, like the toilet line is like around the corner and you're like, yeah, you can- <laughs> I saw all of you. You all had the same fucking thing. You all had packets of lollies <laughs> and they, now your serves are right because you're getting, you're supposed to be warming up and you're supposed to get, get called up in 10 minutes. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, you're at a stage where you're supposed to be optimizing arousal and then you're also trying to force out a shit. Uh, yeah, right. Like, I mean, you, you, are, well. you are definitely aroused to take a shit. Yeah, we know cortisol doesn't make that the best time to do that. Yeah, right. So it's kind of like just getting these things happening. It's just, it's interesting. It's always interesting to see comps, man, and like how everyone sort of reacts. And again, there is, yeah. you know, it, there's, there's always, nuances. yeah, and there's always, you know, uh, individual responses and that sort of stuff. So everyone's yeah. a bit different, but like as a general rule, like if you're going to have lollies and that sort of stuff, maybe make sure that you can tolerate them beforehand. <laughs> yeah. Um, like if you're in training and taking lollies in between sessions, like if you're in, you know, in between squat sets or something like that, and then you find you go into the toilet, it's probably a chance not to eat the lollies on the day. <laughs> just, just saying. I'm, I've got, I've got a really good one that I think we're both get a good little um, five minute spiel out on. Oh God, I'm worried. Already. <laughs> He's already laughing. He hasn't asked the question. This is going to be bad, guys. Do you feel the need to understand macro tracking before moving to intuitive eating? <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> uh, so, look, I don't have a problem with people wanting to intuitively eat, provided they're educated enough to understand what intuitive eating is. And I think um, a lot of people get intuitive eating wrong, especially if they've got the education behind them from macro, macro tracking. Mm -hmm. If you're eating and then eyeballing macros in the food, that's not intuitive eating. That's you, that's you taking an education and educated guess at what's in it 
and, you know, trying to stick to some form of macro number content type scenario in mm-hmm. your head. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I like that. I, you know, the fact that you've been educated enough to be able to eyeball it yep. and then potentially stick to it and not have to worry about it and write it down in an app, fucking kudos. Like you've done well. Awesome. Don't claim that that's intuitive eating. Intuitive eating is literally going by your body's leptin and ghrelin responses and saying, hey, I feel hungry. I'm going to go eat. Oh, I don't feel hungry. I'm not going to eat. Literally, that's it. <laughs> yeah, like, like it's as simple as that. <laughs> so some nuances, I guess you would maybe maybe refer to like in that aspect, which I, I believe I believe most people should move in that route anyway, being able to practice and study macro tracking. So this is the thing I get when people jump on the intuitive eating bandwagon and they're like, as coaches, they start pumping out about I'm like you shouldn't track intuitively eat, and it comes from a person who spent five years macro tracking and calorie tracking. You're speaking from a position of education and informed, and informed, I guess, authority where you understand how easy it is to like gauge food based on visual cues versus someone who doesn't. So you're encouraging someone to do something that you can't, that they can't do based on the fact that you can do it. Now, that isn't wrong. It's that you should be teaching them macro tracking first. Don't dismiss macro tracking because it's allowed you to get to the position to make those decisions and make those educated positions. Exactly. Train them up to do so and then go, all right. Now we don't have to live by my fitness pal. Like yeah. you can back off my fitness pal. You know that a uh, 300 gram chicken breast is roughly 75 grams of protein. You yeah. know that. Education. In, uh, no, exactly. Um, you know, you can go to the coals and buy a cup of rice, which would be roughly 30 grams of carbs. And you just throw that in the microwave. And you know that you can get a bag of salad that's going to hit a diverse range of micronutrients and give you fiber. Cool. You don't need to be like, well, I don't put that in my fitness pal. But that requires you to get to a level of education first to do so. Yes. Now those people who are like, I'm going to get a lot of, get a lot of shit for this, but I'm pregnant and I'm intuitive eating and I know that my body needs cake. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Uh, you feel uh, like you feel like you want cake. Yes. You don't need cake. There's a difference. You're recognizing a hunger cue because <laughs> you're either bored or there's something growing in you. Yes. But it's requiring energy. <laughs> 20 or 30 kilos of gain is not necessarily because the baby's growing inside of you. You need to be practicing, like practicing the concept of mindfulness and acceptance Mm. of hunger cues, of hunger signaling, what hunger actually is. So if you haven't experienced dieting, like we said before, you can't just jump straight into, well, I'm hungry. You're probably bored. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I said, yeah. Well, if if you're also, if you're pregnant, like you do have, uh, you know, more energy, you require more energy. There's there's no question about that. So you will get hungry more frequently. There's no question. That's simple biology. Um, But at the same time, it's like what you choose to put in your mouth uh, is on you. <laughs> like yeah. just because your you, body's not telling you you yeah, need a and, bucket of KFC. Yeah, and again, it's not like I can never say I know what that feels like because I've never been no, pregnant and not, I yeah. don't plan on ever getting pregnant because I don't think I can. But you know, it's just like, yeah, no one's going to ever question the severity of the hunger that you're you're experiencing. Like that that's personal to you yeah. and hundred yeah. percent. Like that's you know, I, 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 like guy males, we cannot comment. <laughs> like we have nope. no comment yeah. on that. No. But you know, you have a choice. You can have cake because you're craving maybe something sweet, right? That's like, cool. Or you could just literally have some like diet sugar-free jelly. You have that sweet cue sort of taken account of and there's like and literally food. N- nearly, nearly no calories in jelly. Yep. You can eat a whole fucking thing of it. Yep. Like which one do you want? Do you want the little piece of cake or do you want more abundant, more jelly that's got yeah. no sugar in it? But it's still sweet because it's artificial sweetness. Yep. And then if you start to claim that artificial sweetness have a problem, like, and they do something for you, like, I will do a whole podcast on why they don't. But <laughs> let's not get into. We're not going to start down that road. Yeah, we, we, won't get, we won't. We won't get into that one anyway. Anyway, and if someone says a spider me, I think I'll start twitching. <laughs> so you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. <laughs> again, not to say that what you genuinely feel um, isn't valid because a hundred percent it is because that's personal yeah. to you and that's coming from your brain. Yeah. Uh, you can still make the choice of what you decide to put in your mouth. Yes. Which I think is the issue with uh, true intuitive eating. I guess, I guess in the instance of the way the question is proposed, it becomes whether you call it informed eating or um, educated eating. I think, I think informed eating informed. I think that's the one that was coined a while back. I think that's the one that's coined a while back, which I think is a lot more in line with what people talk about. They just don't realize that's what it's called. Agreed. Um, which would be, which makes sense. It's, I'm not, I'm not against. It. I'm 100 percent for yeah. it. I just think when people embrace, endorse, and over exemplify uh, intuitive eating, they miss 
missing the context or the misconstruing the actual what they think it is versus yes. what they're saying. Yeah. And it's where we get a lot of people lost. And then it's like, well, I know that I can intuitively eat. I didn't gain weight this week. Like, yeah. yeah, cool. But again, you spend five years learning how to macro track. You can yeah. roughly gauge your calorie levels based on weight fluctuations, yeah. make adjustments across the day. That's still tracking to a degree. Yeah. And I do wonder if um, once you have that education, will you, would you be able to truly intuitive eat? Or is it yeah, or is it yeah, or is it such second nature that you just look at the yeah. food and be like, oh yeah, I know what's roughly in that. <laughs> you know it's what like, I mean? It's, it's like saying like... it's like saying once you learn to ride a bike, could, would you simply never be able to ride a bike again? Well, no. Yeah. You, you, like no matter what, you know how the mechanics work. You're probably going to pick it up and take off. Yeah. So it's like I wonder if you can stop yourself from ever not being able to count in some format. Like, I wonder. Which I wonder in and of itself shouldn't be perceived as a, as a negative thing. Oh, yeah, definitely you, not. It's you've not. learned a skill that is life beneficial yeah. and is now ingrained in you yeah. to a degree that you can make conscious choices with a educated understanding and a health conscious mindset that's going to result in better results for you, whether you're tracking it or not, you're still tracking it. Yeah, uh, I look, I, I completely agree. It's just, uh, yeah, we could be here all day with mind, mindfulness, <laughs> uh, intuitive eating and informed. I thought you'd enjoy it. Informed eating fucking makes me want to kill someone. Um, okay. Um, ooh, what do you reckon? Okay. One more, you reckon? I think we've been running for like 90 minutes already, bro. Yeah, yeah maybe. They, they, yeah. These, these things fly. We're doing pretty ham. Um, have you got have you got a funny one in there we can finish off? Because I've got a good training one. We can both go on. Go on. Um, Let's finish off with a strong one. It's been a serious podcast. This one. We may as well finish serious. Let's just, right, okay. let's just do it. Let's right. do it. Um, okay. So best, best way to bring up a weak muscle group. Okay. So <laughs> we have a few different ways. <laughs> yeah. Like this is going to take another hour. So, so just sit back. Um, we, we, <laughs> I heard a guy was doing a seminar that's probably going to have this included, but I'm not sure. But if, but if, but if, but if, if you're based in Melbourne, you know, you should head down on the September 12th, the uh, apex in Coburg and just, yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> so bringing up a, bringing up a lagging muscle group, prior, prioritizing that muscle group, obviously is going to be the first and foremost uh, action. So you got to look at actual total volume that's been going no, into firstly, that. It's like calves, just don't train them. So like, well, uh, yeah, no, nah, calves, no one cares. The calves don't count. It's knees up. Um, <laughs> so we're looking at, you know, the actual total volume of work that's going into that body part. So if you have a, a record of what you've currently been doing prior to understanding that you need to bring it up, you can then manipulate the numbers to, to better suit. Now, it also comes down to training style and all that sort of stuff as well, right? But let's just keep it as simple as possible. If you're doing, you know, 10 sets a week for that body part and it needs to come up, well, first and foremost, you're going to probably increase sets, right? Nice and simple. You can just increase sets from like 10 to say 15 a week. And then you can also put that at the start of your workout. So it's like, if it's, we'll use calves as an example, because we all need bigger calves, right? Mm -hmm. um, in a leg session, for example, uh, if calves is your going to be your main, ex, your main, muscle group that you need to bring up you'll probably put that first and make that the very first exercise or two exercises you know at the top of the list um in but exercise you don't, you don't get to the end of your session and go now nah, fuck it i'm doing it well i mean I, I i still do them it's just i don't do them well no i do but <laughs> they're just not going to grow <laughs> um but yeah, like you, you want to put them at the start. You're going to have the most energy at the start of your session. So you're going to be able to give the most energy towards that exercise. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that's when you start to play with it, making sure that the rep quality is great, like it's consistent, making sure that, um, you know, you've hit your target reps, your target, you know, RIR, RP based on how you do it. Um, mm -hmm. Smaller muscle groups, I do like to push closer to failure, obviously, and on the last set, mm -hmm. I like to go to failure. Um and then you can also throw in an extra day if that's another way to go mm -hmm. about it. So you can increase frequency of the exercise or the, the muscle group. So increasing sets and volume is one thing. Um, and the way you increase that will be dependent on time that you have. So I do like to use a, I, I use a four day program for most of my clients and myself um, when I train. And then when I need to bring up a lagging body part, I put in a fifth day and spread the volume across mm -hmm. an extra day. Um, and then I add in extra sets and that sort of stuff. Um, I do also like to really push intensity. So if, if you have a lagging body part, but you're not really training intensely, 
um, the first thing I'll do is keep your program the exact same and just say, look, I'm just going to push your intensity first and let's see if we yeah. can stimulate some growth that way because we want to always use minimum effective dose, right? So if we don't need to increase your sets and reps and weight and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, then don't spend then extra three hours in the gym. Yeah, there's, then there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no point. So let's yeah. make your sessions as effective as possible and then we go from there. That's how I like mm-hmm. to bring up a lagging body part. Yeah. I think the other thing to be conscious of too, um, in agreement with all that, um, when you are still programming, you are still training, bringing up a lagging body part doesn't mean that your other body parts aren't going to grow. So if you're going into a physique-based contest and you're looking at, say, you're, like for me myself, last contest was a very weak, um, say very weak, but proportionally a weaker leg, um, leg result, um, just simply small legs. Uh, it's taken a long time to build them up, but you also have to be conscious then that uh, if you don't program correctly, other body parts are going to grow with it. If you maintain, if you maintain that their proportion is now um, what it was to get you that disproportionate uh, sort of visual look, yep. then you have to be mindful that if you if you keep training the same way and then just simply bring up a little bit of, of leg volume, the other parts are going to keep growing as well. So you need to be mindful that uh, it's still going to increase the growth of the other body parts. Yes. Um, and if you're looking at balancing rather than, uh, I guess, um, blowing out that body part, like obviously. Everyone talks about bodybuilders like, oh, they got sick legs or sick quads. I just want to have a complete physique. So of yeah. to me, um, if it's going to be, hey, your legs, are, your legs are underdeveloped, but your arms are out of proportion. Well, okay, so we're going to do a little bit less arms then for a little while, go through a few blocks of just prioritizing legs and we'll do some accessory work at less, I guess, maintenance volume or, yeah. or roughly maintenance volume to sustain that and bring my legs up. Then we'll enhance from there and go from there. So just be mindful that um, though you have a weak part, you're increasing if you still train the same way or there's other, other body parts in total volume and stimulus, it may still continue to grow. So you should be mindful of that as well. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting in that it's like when you look at it like a bodybuilder, for example, I think if you point out one aspect of the person, you kind of like the person's going to be thinking, fuck, it means I need to bring everything else up. <laughs> it's kind of like, yep. and your legs are sick. Oh, fuck. It means I got to do chest. I got to do more shoulders. I got to do yep. more arms. I got to do more back. Fuck. <laughs> you didn't mention my fucking lats. God damn yeah, it. Right. The funny thing is though, I guess on the flip side, if you look at a powerlifting thing and we talk about frequency and, um, so the powerlifting movements are skill based. So yeah, and, and they're quite taxing, like quite taxing on the joints. And it's kind of mm-hmm. like when you're in comp prep for powerlifting meet, um, increasing intensity, obviously dropping total volume over a period of time. When you're leading to your comp, that's how we peak, right? Mm-hmm. That means you're placing more stress on the joints as well as the muscles. Whereas in bodybuilding, where because we're using mostly isolation stuff where we can, you know, provided that's what you've got access to, it's more mm-hmm. stress or more um, tension is on the muscle and the muscle belly versus the joint itself. Now, not to say that you're not going to load the joint because it will obviously load. It's just a little different. Mm-hmm. So when powerlifting coaches increase frequency for the movements, Provided it's relatively sub-maximal, it's okay, or it can be okay to improve the skill and skill efficiency. But if you're increasing the actual frequency of the movement and keeping the load relative and it's kind of high, you place such a high risk uh, on the lifter (laughs) for injury. And it's kind of like, it's just Mm -hmm. not a safe. And it just goes to show that a lot of powerlifting coaches still are doing off-season programming in a powerlifting sense and still giving them barbell movements when if they have access to a commercial gym and have access to machines yeah that they can literally go into a more physique based off season yeah I'm improve it yeah yeah improve their health markers get a bigger muscle because at the end of the day as we know a bigger muscle is usually well, a stronger muscle right and then a stronger muscle if we dial in the neural uh, side of it being the skill <laughs> yep we're going to be able to express that strength better and yes. you're going to have more fucking strength. It's like, <laughs> it's just really, it's still something that like coaches just don't seem to understand and grasp. Yeah. I see a lot of off-season programs. Again, it's provided you have access. If you don't have access and you don't have access to barbells and dumbbells, well, fuck, there's not much you can do. That That's yeah. fine. Like that's a different story. But if you have clients that have access to gyms and commercial gyms with machines, stop giving yep. them barbell fucking movements in their yep. off-season. Like they're burnt out and fried neurally yep. because it's a skill. Yeah, there's a reason why people take holidays, like athletes take holidays, like basketballers take holidays, and when they go muck around and shoot, you think they're really dialing their skill. They're freaking mucking around, being stupid. Same thing with yeah. AFL footballers. Same, same thing with rugby players. Same thing with like every other skill based sport. When they have their off season, they don't normally do the comp stuff. Yes, they're trying to improve yes. another aspect, you know, of their Correct. weakness or like they're improving an aspect, a weakness of their game. Yep. So yeah, like stop being stuck in your fucking ways. 
just a slight divergence from that. I remember when I was coaching, I had a, a family friend who used to be a powerlifter in England came over and he's like, oh, I just can't find any coaches. Like, can you program for me? I was like, yeah, cool. We can do that. Um, what is it you're lacking? What are your numbers and stuff like that? What do you want to look for? Um, and he was almost offended that I included hypertrophy based programming because um, he didn't have a meet coming up, but yeah. I wanted to in- increase his actual uh, recruitment capability to maximize muscle recruitment in the lift. Yeah, exactly. I was like, well, if you think about it logically, mate, you're using muscles to as levers and you're pulling something against resistance. If we can yeah. increase the amount of force you can produce right. to offset that. Give me one sec. Anyway. Okay, sorry, we're back. Had a little right. interruption from um, I think I think your bags just got here, but anyway. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> and we ended up increasing, I think, uh, deadlift squat 20 kilos and bench was 10 kilos after coming back from injury as well. And I did very minimal powerlifting actual program. And he's like, what the fuck? And I was like, well, I'm not, I'm not a powerlifting coach, but I can understand that the fact that you have muscles that are being used to pull against a resistance. Yes. So if we have a greater force production capability, which means greater muscle recruitment, then logically you should pull a bit better and be in a better position to do so. But who would have thought logic actually trumps and wins all day, every day. I got, I got one more funny one for you. That'll just uh, be like, just a just quick pump it out. Go on, one more. Pages. Go on. Would you like to see a drug Olympics? You're saying that we don't see it now. <laughs> okay. Let's remove any limitations <laughs> or, or preconceived. Wait, 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 wait. You, you think the best of the best are all fucking natural? Like, come on now. What? We're increasing what, spring would I like to see, every year. Yeah, what? Would, I, would I like to see uh, like an open Olympics where there's no yeah. restrictions? Open based drug Olympics. I, I would be more inclined to watch the Olympics if that was yes. the case. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't, like, I don't watch the Olympics. It's not interesting to me. Like, sure, I'm, I can be patriotic and I love that, you know, the Australians did so fucking well. Awesome. Like go Patty Mills, yep. fucking oath. Like dude, the legend should yes. be bloody Australian of the year. Like, no question. First skateboarding champion, Australian. Fucking yeah, I look. Don't, I don't think skateboarding should be an Olympic sport. <laughs> but you know, like, like good on him. Like fucking oath. Yeah, like yeah, well done. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If there, were, if drugs were, um, you know, they weren't limited in the Olympics, I'd be more inclined yeah, to watch it. Yeah, I'd like to see. Yeah. But then Let's I have this. Let's com- bolt every compound possible and see if we can break nine I, seconds. I would love. To, well, this is the funny thing. I would love to see one an open Olympics in that aspect, but then I would love to see what actual difference there is at the top. Yeah. If there is anything yeah. or if there isn't, because yeah, like if there's a dramatic change, you could be like, Oh, okay. Like maybe they weren't yeah. taking maybe as much as we thought, or they weren't yeah, doing yeah, what we thought. Yeah. But then if there's no change, you're just like, Hmm, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. We so, know these are performance enhancing compounds yeah, and your performance it, hasn't enhanced. Yes. Hmm. Like, Hmm, like sus. <laughs> What's going on here, guys? Like was it that old TV show? Nothing sus. <laughs> 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 but man, but yeah, I mean, fucking oath. I would be more inclined to watch it. That's for sure. It'd be interesting okay, to see like yeah. the javelin and the discus and like even oh. high jump, long jump. Like, fuck, that'd be like the crowds in the grass. They'd have to move out of the way for the javelin coming through. <laughs> <laughs> fucking oath. They have to just clear the path in front of them. <laughs> like, Archery's all of a you, sudden a game. You just see it go through the stadium. <laughs> yeah, like straight, straight through the board into like <laughs> a fucking tree behind it or some shit. Yeah, man, like yeah. it'd be it'd be interesting. Uh, I mean, that that would be worth watching, I think, more. I'd be more yeah, entertained and I agree. More, yeah, in, you know, inclined to watch the Olympics because I think out of all the major sporting events we have in this world, I think the Olympics is probably the least of one that I want to watch. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. short of the sprinting, um, you know, pl- you know yeah. I, I ran back in high school and did some track. So it's like short of that, like the swimming, I, I couldn't give two shits about. Yeah, um, I agree. Basketball. It's cool, like, it's cool yeah. stuff like, yeah, but. Like if it's if if it's on and there's nothing on, maybe I'll watch it. Yeah. Um. Like I can like appreciate. That. Yeah. Well, it's like I can appreciate the effort that these guys go to, and like I can, you know. Yeah. Hundred percent. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. Like like to be the best. Like honestly, this is funny. I'm probably gonna get ripped for this. Um. I had this conversation like the last week or so. So I'm trying to think. Was it the long jump? Um. Where the Italian and his best friend shared the gold medal. Yeah, that, that two different countries and yeah, but they, they like, but yeah, but they were best friends off the track. So like that's amazing. Yeah. Like that, you know, like yeah. to, to be the two best friends get to the final, get to the gold, yeah. and then share it. It's like they were offered a jump off, so it's like next jump wins type scenario, sudden yeah. death to see who the winner is and who gets the gold medal. Yeah, isn't that the point? Yeah, like, yeah, I Olympics, agree. I agree. Olympics. Like in 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 a competition, maybe outside the Olympics, where it's like a you know an international meet or even then but i yep. still you know like 
I can I, I can appreciate the sportsmanship, the sentiment. Like that's your best mate. Like you've both trained so fucking hard. You've both got there. Yeah. Wouldn't you want to know which one's better on the day? Yep. Like to me, yeah, to me like, it's, like, yeah. I'm sure I'm not the only one that thinks this. I'm sure we're not the only yeah. ones. Um, yeah. And again, it's it's not like I'm taking away from it because like yeah, dude, it's touching it's, as hell. Super fucking sportsmanship. Yeah, and, and these two have got to be. These are the two best of the best at this particular yeah. Olympics. Like, there's no question. But still, one I think has to be a gold and one has to be a silver, <laughs> not like, two gold. In a in a in a competitive like yes, like a camaraderie and sportsmanship and like the the essence of the games. Yeah, cool, great stuff. But from a competitor standpoint, yeah. Do you think Michael is going to share being uh, first place? My with point, the yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and I'd being be. like, "Hey, let's just share first place." Yeah, I feel like if that was me, I'd be like, "I high five and be like, fucking yeah!" But bro, we're gonna find out who's better. <laughs> yeah. Even 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 amongst us, I need to know. Yeah, like hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Like yeah, like cool. Like we can say that we've won gold, but I want to know who's better. <laughs> yeah. I've trained for even four if we fuck- turn the cameras off or whatever. Yeah. Like uh, yeah, yeah. Like do it at, 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 at the back in the car park. Like who yeah. the fuck is better? <laughs> like yeah. I need to know. Yeah, yep. you know what I mean. Like hundred percent. I agree. Yeah. 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 I, do, I think we need to wrap it up there because it's gone forever. Fucking yeah, fun. we've been here for a while, so we'll leave it there. Um, thanks, guys, for listening. For first, before we uh, leave, you do have some books coming out. I did post or repost what you posted, so quickly drop that for us yes so um for the month of august we've got coming up um i've got my stress uh stress book coming out which i've been working on tirelessly for a very long time um so is brooklyn um so getting editing and publishing done all sort of jazz so that's a big one uh, but then i'm starting to move into my program so you're going to get a look at a uh, bundle packs and things that actually help reorientate life so um how to fight how to structure structure and set goals um and how to find purpose in life so those three together will comprise a pretty cool bundle of, um, I guess, eBooks and I want to turn into programs eventually, but for now, just an eBook to sort of give you a sense of direction and how to reorientate things. So those three are finished writing. Um, I've got feedback on them. They've been edited. They're looking to get published now to get up and downloadable. So um, by the end of August, I should have those out to complete the pack. Sweet. Um, and just myself, I've got the seminar that I've plugged last night and already generated some interest, which is really cool. So thanks for the love. Uh, 12th of September, provided we're not in lockdown um, <laughs> at Apex. It's going to be a full day. We'll do a couple of pracs and some basic theory. So some uh, programming theory. We'll do some basic bio anatomy, physiology stuff, some basic biomechanics as well, just terms that you should probably know. Um, and yeah, two pracs. Pracs will be like our PE versus RIR, training to failure, what it feels like. And then the second one, I won't talk about just yet because it's going to be a bit of fun, a bit more educational. So it won't be as hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. I right, do. Till good, next sir. week. Thanks yes. everyone for tuning in. Again, you, appreciate guys. the questions and the feedback. And Keep as always, coming. if you do have anything you want us to talk about, please feel free to DM or to throw it in one of the question boxes we throw up on our Instagram pages. Sweet guys, catches. Catch you later.